Really appreciate it. What was your thing? Um, just like public school education versus homeschooling education. Okay. Well, I'll let Rachel take over for a little bit and let you guys have the conversation. So uh, take it away, Rachel. Hello, ladies. Hey, Brian. Thanks for having me on. Uh, well, since you had something, I'll just let you go first with what you wanted to say, and I'll just respond. Oh, me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think. Oh. Didn't you say you had something about homeschool versus public school? I just wanted or? to he- hear your um, viewpoint on if you think that homeschooling education is better or public school education is better, and why so? Um, well, it's kind of funny you ask, because I have been homeschooling the kids for many years now. Um, I did a little guest spot on Tucker Carlson's show when he was still on Fox to talk about the big spike in homeschooling during the pandemic. Uh, statistically, homeschooled students do better overall, like in pretty much every metric compared to public school students. Um, I think that there's a lot of big problems with public schooling now. Not that it was ever great. If you look into the history of public schooling and why it was started and who started it, uh, it was never really about learning or making people smarter or preparing them for adult life. It was more so about preparing good little cogs in the wheel who were going to follow you know, the values of the state, whatever the government wanted. Uh, kids to do, and it was based on the Prussian school system, which was to make good soldiers for Prussia. So um, I think Andrew's really spot on when he says school is not for smart people. (laughs) I think that's correct. Um, I think uh, there's lots of ways to socialize kids, and especially nowadays, um, there's homeschooling co-ops, homeschooling groups. Um, There's more ways to connect and socialize than ever before, and like Andrew said, our kids can do all the... um, like sports and the extracurricular activities. They can go to tech center, vocational center, all that kind of stuff. So um, it really just gives you the freedom. And with we have five kids, so each kid has their own strengths, their own weaknesses, their own personality, their own way they prefer to learn. One of the biggest weaknesses in public school is that everybody, you kind of have to cater to the lowest common denominator. So if you're like a little smarter, you might have a hard time. If you're somebody who has a different style of learning that's not really adaptable to public school, you're gonna have a hard time. And especially boys, uh, public school is really catered to girls. It's catered to girls doing stuff like sitting still, getting in line. Uh, My cat's freaking out over there. Andy's trying to He's trying to handle them. But yeah, so I I much prefer homeschooling for a lot of reasons. We can get as much done in a day at homeschool in about two hours as the kids would learn in, you know, seven hours of a regular school day. And I would say they retain a lot more of it. And there's no need for like extra homework when you get home, things like that. So I'm a huge homeschooling advocate and it's worked great for our family. I know that not every parent may be great at homeschooling, but not every parent's a great parent. There's always going to be some people who don't do well regardless of what we're talking about. So yeah, kind of where I would go with it. I absolutely love your comment. Um, I was just, I think it kind of like bothered me initially because I didn't really like the generalization that, you know, homeschooling's best for everyone. I think there are definitely like special cases, like just like you said, like super, super like geniuses or like prodigies, like they should be homeschooled and, you know, develop those talents and um, knowledge. But I think I went to public school um, and then I also went to like a small private school as well for high school. And I just found so much or I feel like I learned so much in public schools and private schools, Um, not only kind of like, obviously, I think if I was homeschooled, I may have known more. Oh, sorry. (laughs) He's over here wrestling the cat. Oh, no worries. (laughs) I feel like maybe that would have gone me like academically like further, but I feel that the social um, benefits, like the socialization was enhanced, I guess, in a way in public schooling because, you know, you're going to school every day and you're forced to socialize so I feel like that grew my socialization skills Um, whereas I feel that like homeschooling yes you can you know do activities like extracurriculars but you're not seeing the same people every day because like you know soccer practice is like three times a week but I think there's a few things you're not thinking about like for example uh, most children's first exposure to violence is in a public school Uh, Public schools are more prone to violence, um, child SA incidents happening. 
than even private schools, churches, pretty much any other place. Uh, schools are pretty dangerous on average now. And uh, you, then you have all of the indoctrination with certain gender ideologies. Like at least when I'm homeschooling my child, I know they're not gonna come back a different gender, right? Um, they're, gonna, they're gonna still be a girl if they were a girl that morning. I'm not gonna put them on the bus and they're gonna come back a boy. So there's that. Um, and the other thing is that we've only had compulsory public education for about a century. All of human history prior to that, nobody had public school. Do you think that people weren't socialized? Of course they were. And one of the problems when we were talking about women in the workplace and working moms earlier, we used to have community uh, everywhere throughout all of history. Children were raised by their mothers, but not just their mothers. The, all the women were at home with the kids. So mom had her sisters and her cousins and her neighbors and her friends who were all also raising their children. And so it was kind of done all together. Everybody wasn't isolated. You didn't have uh, little boy number one in high school, little daughter number two in junior high, and then mommy goes to work in her building and daddy goes to work in his building, and everybody separated and atomized. And then we have to try to come back together for two hours at the end of the day before we all go to bed. Uh, the socialization thing was never a problem. It's only a problem now because, yeah, the parents aren't home, the family's not around. All the women are in cubicles. So it's everything has changed so much in a century that it's it is tough to talk about because all of you especially grew up in this modern world with the internet and with working parents and strong independent boss moms who told you that the most important thing to do was be uh ambitious and have a career right but i want to ask you guys a question what do you think about this so do you guys think that the feminists who came before you or the strong independent women you know your grandmas and your great grandmas did they fight for the right to be career women and go to college like is that something that you think they had to fight for that was worth fighting for maybe we'll just start over here in chair one and go around do you think that it was a good thing that women you know did they fight for their right to work and be educated and be independent and was that a good thing Yes, I think they did, and um, I think it was a good thing. Yes. Okay. What about number two? I agree. Yes, they did fight for it because they didn't get it in the past, and it is a good thing. Okay. Number three? I agree. Same. Okay. Um, my family definitely did fight. I am from Thailand, and a lot of um, jobs are like either like you're a farmer or you work for the government. So to them, school is very important, whether it's homeschooling or private school or public school. Um, and I have a different viewpoint from my family completely because I don't think that um, people who are like can be successful and intelligent should always be in school. I have family members who never finished high school, even college, and they are thriving, making a lot of money because they have learned um, like actual life skills, things that you are not taught when you're in school. A good point. Okay, what about number five? Um, I think my family did. I'd say overall it's a good thing, but I do think that some people didn't necessarily, uh, they may have fought too for it, but maybe they weren't fighting for themselves, because I can recognize that plenty of people don't want to have to go do that, but nowadays you're expected to, so yeah. I think it's definitely a mixture. Okay. What about you? I think it's a mixture as well, but I think some women did fight. Um, to have you know a career okay um i would say yes in india you know it's at least back then or when my mom grew up it wasn't always a guarantee you get an education there's arranged marriage you're expected to have children she always wanted what's best for me and she's always been pushing me to get an education um build a life for myself so i agreed that um I think the the fight was for good, and it is still good now. It's still applicable now. Wait, was the question whether women fought for our education or not, or if it was yeah, a like, good thing? Did women, do you think that women had to fight for the right to be able to have careers, and do you think that was good? Um, I guess historically women did fight. I'm, I'm kind of torn on the 
good or bad part because I do believe in equal opportunity, but I think it was overall a detriment to society that women were sent to work. Okay, I'm gonna follow that up with a second question. So if women fought for the right to work and have careers and be able to be independent, have their own money and have an education, do you think that it's a privilege for a woman to be able to stay home with her children? Like if, if I said, oh, well, I stay home with my kids and my husband works, would you say, well, not all women have that privilege? So is it, I'm asking, is it a privilege to be a stay-at-home mom or is it, are you oppressed if you're a stay-at-home mom? I think um, people would look at it both ways. Personally, I think it is a privilege because as we were talking about earlier, you know, like she also said just now, um, most women were forced to go to work, which they didn't want to. They wanted to stay home. Um, so in that case, it would be a privilege. But then for other cases, it would be oppression. But I would think it was a privilege. Okay, number two, what do you think? I agree. I think it is a privilege for a woman to stay at home. But also, I also think it depends on the woman. Like, whether or not you want to. Like, if the man is able to be the one providing. Okay. What about three? Um, I think if your husband makes enough to where you guys can do that, I think that's a pretty good thing. I think it's a privilege. Okay. What about number four? I think if your yes, your husband is wealthy enough to support you and your entire family and you can just stay at home, take care of your kids, like not really have to worry about making money yourself in your career, then that is a privilege. Okay. I think overall, I think it's a privilege. At the same time, I know that if I had a child, while I'd want to be able to stay home with them, and especially their more formative years, I also would need some sort of other work beyond just my kid, because I wouldn't want to just feel like I lost myself. Mm -hmm. Okay, number six. Yeah, I think... Sorry, guys, I don't have your names here, so I'm just <laughs> going by your chair number. Um, it always like depends on the case, but I think it's a privilege in some cases, as mentioned before. Um, yes, I, w I think it's a privilege to stay at home. I think it's a wonderful thing to be stay at home mom, my housewife. If your husband can support it, then yeah. A privilege. Okay. okay, so I want you guys to think about the fact that when we went around with both those questions, everybody said, yes, women had to fight for the right to be able to get an education and have a career. And then everyone also said, but if you can stay home with your children, you are privileged. How could that be the case? How could it be both? How could it be that uh, you had to fight, you know, women had to fight and blaze a trail and a path to be able to work outside the home and have their own money and careers, but also if you can stay home with your children that you're privileged because wouldn't they only have been fighting for the right to have careers and education if they were oppressed before when they were staying at home? By the way, I wanna mention something else. In all my research, in every culture around the world, there has never been any law I'm aware of where women were expressly forbidden from working. So if you have this idea that women weren't allowed to work or women weren't allowed to be educated, there may be some countries like India where perhaps uh, ki girls can't go to school or parts of Africa, but I'm mainly talking about the Western world in America where, where we all are. Uh, women have always been allowed to work, but before feminism and before the Industrial Revolution, it didn't make sense. Why? Because if you had the, like the average woman in the year 1800 had seven children, seven births, probably a few of them might not make it to adulthood, but if you had seven births, why on earth would you want a career outside the house? I mean, like, why would you, what are you gonna do, pay daycare for seven kids? And here's the other thing, you guys are talking about um, women should have a career if they're gonna be moms and uh, we can just pay daycare or have family come in. And it's like, you realize that that's really stupid. And here's why, <laughs> because how does it make sense for me to say, you know what, I'm a mom, but I deserve a career and I, I'm ambitious and I have career goals and I need to be able to work. So I'm gonna hire this other woman to come in and do the mothering for eight or nine hours a day while I'm gone. Well, what about that woman? she doesn't deserve a career you're just all you're doing is shifting the stuff over right so 
earlier somebody said, um, you know, well, why can't the dads stay home? I want to know what you guys think about that. What do, do you guys think it's the same if dad stays home? Do you think that it's just as good if dad's staying home? If everybody did that, it'd be fine. Um, can we address the entire question or would you like us sure. to? Sure. Okay. What, whatever you guys want to say, we can just kind of open okay. it up. So um, I kind of see like, I see what you're saying. It's kind of like a, we look like we want to have our cake and eat it too kind of concept. But it's more so, as I would say I think it is, um, that we fight to go to work so that we have money to pay bills, we have money to put food on the table and do things like that. That's why we get our jobs. But then we would also like to be at home and stay with our children and stuff like that. So I see it in your way, but then I also see it in mine. And um, your other question was, I'm sorry... About. Well, do you think that it's the same if dad stays home? Because that was something that came up earlier in the panel. Because uh, I don't remember which one of you said it to Andrew, but you were like, well, why can't the dad just stay home? Why does it have to be me? And right? yeah, Why should it be mom that stays home, do you think? Well, I think personally um, the dad can stay home as well. I think either either as long as there is a parent present, it's you know great. Both ways. So what do you think would happen if society wide, let's say that, you know, women are strong and they're rising, they're getting more college degrees than men are today, which by the way, that's not very new. Uh, women have had higher literacy rates and higher high school graduation rates in the United States since we started tracking those numbers in 1790. And I'll, I can get to why later, but what if we shifted everything and suddenly the next generation, 80% of the children are raised by the dads. The dads stay home and the moms go to work. Do you think that that would work for society, uh, like on a society-wide level? I see number two shaking her head no. Why do you think that might not work? Because I believe that if your kid is raised like from a mother or a father, it's different. Like there's some stuff that a mother can't provide that a father can provide, but there's also a lot of stuff that a father can't provide that a mother can. True, that's true, but it's even simpler than that. Do you know what the top 20 most important and dangerous jobs are? Like if you look at job statistics, the top 20 jobs that we need the most that that are most important to keeping this whole infrastructure running. So you guys are all sitting here in a studio, there's lights, there's camera, there's it's a concrete building, you're up on the, you know, you're up in this building with windows and there's electricity, we have internet, right? All this infrastructure is built by men. So all of the stuff you need to keep society running, logging, engineering, concrete mixing and laying, all forms of construction, power line work, uh, cell phone towers, everything infrastructure related, those are the most dangerous, the most difficult, and the most important jobs. And they are occupied by anywhere from 80 to 99% men. Like if you look at concrete work, it's 99.8% men. Women don't lay concrete. Do you think that society would keep going if we had all the concrete layers at home raising the kids? What if all of the men who run the telecommunications, your cell phone, your Wi-Fi, your high-speed internet. What if all the men who build those systems fix them when they go down? What if they were all at home raising babies? What if all of the power linemen, the guys who go out, like we just had this massive bunch of hurricanes in the Southeast and knocked out the power to all of Appalachia and all of Florida for a couple of weeks. All the people who go in there and rebuild that and rescue people from the floods and rebuild everything, that's all men. So what do you think would happen if we had an economy where all the women went to work and the men stayed home? Do you know what the top 20 jobs occupied by women are? They're the same top 20 jobs occupied by women 100 years ago. So if you look at the top 20 most female jobs in 1920 and the top 20 most female jobs in 2020, they're almost exactly the same. All we did was swap HR and farm work. So more women did like small time farm work back then and more of them do HR now. But other than that, women are like early childhood educators, teachers, nurses, bookkeeping, retail workers, food service industry workers, things like that. So you, 
men and women are not interchangeable. Moms and dads are not interchangeable. So this idea that like, oh, I can be a strong, independent boss, babe, and I'll just outsource the child care, or dad can just stay home. You could argue that that's fine on some individual levels, but if we make this the like society-wide expectation, everything that allows you girls to think that you are strong, independent boss babes who can do it on your own crumbles. It disappears. It turns to dust. There's no more Wi-Fi. There's no more electricity. Kiss your air conditioning goodbye. There's nobody to fix your car when it breaks. You don't have gasoline because there's no oil rig workers, you know, getting the gas that you use to drive your car. So basically this is all kind of Delulu land stuff. This idea that like, oh, we can just do whatever we want. It just depends on my personal preference and you know, it'll all be fine. So, I mean, a lot of what Andrew tries to get you guys to think about is what you want on a personal level is not the only question here. It's not the only moral question. It's not, it's not the only thing to consider. There's a greater good society has to work together as a whole. So. Well, I know I just threw a lot at you, but does anybody have anything they want to jump in on? Um, with me specifically, my mom actually had to hide her pregnancy because in Thailand, when you are found out that you are having a baby or has a baby, you have to stop working completely and you're expected to take care of the child. And then later, your um, expected child is supposed to help support your family. Okay. I mean, I'm not sure if I would say that's good or bad. There are some like ethical issues or concerns I would have when we're discussing like kind of Christian societies versus non-Christian societies. And that's like a whole other topic. But in general, I would say that pregnant women, nursing mothers, mothers of young children should be at home with those children. If you look um, at the statistics in 1940, only about 6% of American women who had children under five worked outside the home. Mm -hmm. Now that number is like 58%. It's like super high. Most little babies and little children's moms spend most of their day at the office. And as a mother, 95% 95, 95 of all the time you'll ever spend with your child is gone by the time they turn 18. You don't ever get those years back. You don't ever get to do that over. You don't ever get that time. So to me, you're, you're taking a precious, finite gift that you have. You're taking this, this limited time of your life, a short time in your life that you get to spend raising your own children, and you're giving it away to somebody else, some $11, $12 an hour daycare worker, because you think being at the office is more important. And I understand completely that we're brainwashed and propagandized to think that. I was told all the time, from the time I was little, you have to go to college, you have to have a career, you have to have your own money, because if you don't, what? What do they say will happen to you? If you don't have your own money, if you don't have your own job, what's gonna happen? You'll get trapped. A man could abuse you. What if he leaves you? What if he dies? What if he cheats? But nobody ever asks, uh, wait, what if I spend all of my years going to college to be a, a surgeon, right? I wanna be a neurosurgeon, like a really important job. I'm shooting for the stars. Nobody ever says, well, wait a second. What if you get in an accident and uh, you know your arm gets broken and you can't do surgery? Or what if you get arthritis and you can't use the scalpel anymore? Like, What if your eyesight goes bad and you can no longer perform surgery? Nobody fear mongers women about all the things that can go wrong when you base your whole life around your career. They only fear monger women about what could go wrong if they base their life around being a wife and mother. And I just think you guys probably don't ever get a chance to hear anybody say that to you, so I wanted the chance to say it. I actually really appreciate hearing a different perspective, um, and I feel like you're very like well knowledge, so it's very interesting um, what you have to say. So thank you. I just wanted to say that. Yeah, thanks. I'm I'm glad that you guys wanted to listen. But if anybody has like an objection or like a a counter argument or you're listening to me and you're like, well, wait a minute, but what about this, Rachel? Or what about that? You know, I'm happy to hear it if you have any objections or other thoughts about that. I think that it is perfectly fine. Like I agree with your viewpoint, you know, you should be there in your child's formative years. Um, I also think that I want a choice that where maybe, I don't know if I see a future with having kids in it. And if I want to be that 
neurosurgeon, if I want to be an anesthesiologist, whatever, that I can do that without having to worry about someone saying you're wasting all your childbearing years or you want to be a stay-at-home wife. Like I mean, I like I said again, I my mom's a stay-at-home mom. I love her. Um, I think being a stay-at-home mom's like amazing, but I also think that a lot of women, um, their their mothers weren't allowed to have the choice to do what they want or be who they wanted because they were raising them. And I think that if they, you know, maybe they don't want kids and they do want to pursue their career goals, that they should be free too. Okay. So you guys were talking earlier about South Korea and how it has the lowest birth rate on planet Earth right now, which it does. It's like 1.6 child per woman. Uh, but did you know that the whole world, except for a handful of African countries and Israel, are well below replacement and have been for a long time? If you guys follow Elon Musk on Twitter, he's probably the most famous person who's talked a lot about the birth rate collapse and what it could mean. Um, and so basically in, in the year 2024, we've got uh, planet-wide logistics that have pretty much wiped out hunger. The only places where there's still hunger, there's... Um, kind of like extenuating circumstances, reasons why that's still a problem. But in all the developed nations, like nobody has starved to death in the United States for many decades. It's not a thing. And the reason that's the case is because we had this big population boom during the Industrial Revolution, another baby boom after World War II, and with all of the time and human capital and um, brilliance of people, problem solving, and just more people in general, We've been able to eradicate a lot of problems we used to have with things like hunger, getting resources where they need to go. If we experience population collapse, which we are, if it keeps going where it's going now, we're going to start having problems and we're already seeing that. So supply chains, we're already seeing some supply chain failures because there's simply not enough labor. We don't have enough people. It's one of the reasons there's so much illegal immigration, but even the places where those illegal immigrants were coming from, their populations are now well below replacement rates. So we're running out of people to even import. Places like Japan and Canada don't have enough young people to uh, support the elderly populations. There's just not enough young people to you know, pay into the social security system or work at nursing homes or work in senior healthcare to take care of the elderly. So again, we can say it's really nice, oh, I want the chance to follow my dream of being a neurosurgeon. And I'm sure there's always gonna be some women who do that. But let me ask, how many of the women here have a college degree? Everybody raise your hand if you got a degree. There's, oh, a lot of you, okay. What's your degree in? Just go around and just tell me real quick what your degree is in. Start. I have my associates in social and behavioral sciences. Okay, and next? Um, just associates. Okay, in what, what field? Um, in like mathematical okay uh next number uh, five you have a psychology but i don't really intend to use my degree i just wanted to get it <laughs> yeah psychology is probably the most oversaturated and most female field at the moment so it's tough to get a good paying job and then next what's yours i'm currently obtaining a ba in psych and brain okay and next health science Health sciences. Okay, next. Uh, poli sci and econ. Okay. Uh, are all of you, so one of you said you're not intending to work in the field. Are the rest of you all intending to have careers in the field you're getting a degree in? Okay. Sorry. And did you probably, most of you said yes. Did you notice that it's usually the same stuff? Like I was saying, it's like healthcare, it's psychology, it's like behavioral stuff. Um, most of you aren't going to be like structural engineers. Most of you aren't going to be like building life-saving medical devices or, you know, any of those like super essential jobs. Um, I mean, nursing, there's some things you could argue are pretty essential, but men could do those jobs too. So why would it not be smarter to have all of you ladies here, if we had raised you different, if we had raised you to say, being a virtuous woman who is a good mother and a good wife and a good caretaker, and a good member of the community, you know, you're doing all the community stuff women used to do, like 
organizing community functions and church things and uh, programs for kids and just all those support roles that women used to do. Would it be a better world if we were raising all of you girls to do that instead of raising you to start your OnlyFans, uh, go to college, earn a degree? By the way, I bet a lot of you have some college debt. The average woman has like $40,000 in college debt after she graduates. So now you're having to go into your 20s with a whole bunch of debt and a degree that you may or may not be able to find a job in, that you may or may not like the job, right? And you're forgoing all of the childbearing years to chase that stuff. Do you think that that's like a net positive? Do you think that's a smart, like if you were king of the nation or queen of the nation, would that be how you'd want to organize things? Um, can I say, I just wanted to say that I get why why you're asking this line of question. I just don't see it being um, asked to men a lot. Like, why did you choose to be a neurosurgeon? Why don't you just, you know, do this line of work instead? Why do you choose to be ambitious? Like, I feel like it's so directed at women. Like, why did you choose to, like, um, leave your virtuous woman duties and pursue a career? But I really don't see that asked to men. And I, I understand why. You know, I understand there's traditional duties assigned to men and women, but, you know, societies change, and I I don't understand why we still have to go through this line of questioning. Well, I'll tell you why. Because the current state of things is completely unsustainable. People ask me all the time, what do you think is going to happen? How do we battle feminism? How do we battle the problems of in modernity that we have with falling birth rates and broken families, high divorce rates and people not even bothering to get married anymore and nobody having babies. What do you, what should we do, Rach? How do we fix this? And I'm like, it's a self-correcting problem because this situation is totally unsustainable. The future, if everybody turns out, if all the young women are raised like you girls and they have your mentality, and this is not a dig at any one of you individually because I understand exactly the world you were raised in, the propaganda you were raised with, Everything from pop music to movies to every TV show you've ever watched tells you you need to be a strong, independent woman and have a career and follow your dreams and all that stuff. I get it. But the future, if everybody follows your path, is there is no future. There's no world because there's no people. There's nobody to keep the lights on uh, and humanity dies out. And the reason why, when you say, why do we have to endure this line of questioning? It's because only one of us can have the babies. The men can't have the babies. They can't gestate a child for nine months and birth it and nurse it and raise it. And we need the men to be making the world livable for the only people who can do that, which is women. So all of the other jobs, all the careers we've talked about, those careers exist to support one occupation, one purpose, which is being a mother. The world around you the reason it's built is so that future generations can be born. That's the only reason for it. What good is a world full of technology and robots and Wi-Fi and electricity if no one's going to be born into it, if, if we're having like one child per woman? In fact, in the United States, we have uh, rising mortality rates for the first time since the Industrial Revolution. We're the only developed nation in the world that has rising mortality rates, meaning more women are dying in childbirth than years past. It's on the rise. Why would that be? Anybody take a guess as to why mothers would be dying more in childbirth in America now than they were the last like 60, 70 years? They start having babies later on in their life. You got it. That's exactly right. The rising uh, maternal age is the reason for that. So having babies when you're 35 plus is a lot riskier. It's a lot riskier to the mom, it's riskier to the child. And what happens when we train women to do education and career first and then think about family when they're in their 30s, 40s, you maybe get one to two children, that's it. So I understand on an individual level, you might be annoyed and be like, well, but my dream of uh, you know, whatever you wanted to do, I think you said uh, some kind of healthcare related field, I mean, that's cool and everything, but you won't have a world, there won't be a world left for you to do anything in if we don't have kids. So I've asked this question before, but I wanna ask you guys going around. If, if it was the case that you had a choice, you could either do what you want with your life, you could follow your dreams and have a career, or, and if you do that, if all of you did that, the human race dies out in 300 years from now. Or if all of you decide, okay, we're going to have children and be moms, 
but you don't get to chase your personal dreams and your your career goals and your material ambitions but the human race gets to survive which would you pick personally i would choose my career just because i don't want children and Mm -hmm. although that doesn't really matter to this exact question i think that we're all gonna die at some point and i mean if you're not living your life for you then what are you living it for i mean i don't know that's my personal opinion though everybody else could be different all right what what about number two well you said something earlier about how like it's mainly men who are doing the engineering and like the lighting and stuff but i i'm currently in engineering and there, there's been like a lot of women in engineering too, and this might be like a sidetrack. But what would happen like to those women who are chasing after that degree? Would they just not achieve it then? Yeah. So in the hypothetical scenario I just laid out, yeah, um, I'm just asking you personally if 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 they came to you and they said, look, ladies, we're recruiting moms because otherwise we're projecting that humanity is going to die out in 300 years. So we're asking you, please stay home and have children. But I mean, we're going to let you choose your career if that's what you want to do. But if you do do that, if most of you do that, you know, we only got about 300 years left before humanity dies out. What would you choose? And I'll answer the question about what would happen to the other women in a minute. I would stay home and take care of my children. Okay. What about number three? I don't know. I feel like that's a really, really tough thing to decide on but hmm. I feel like okay can I ask you a question and then depending on your answer do you think it's smarter for women to have their kids and then once they hit 18 then start a life or do you think a woman's life should just be raising her kids I think we give women uh bad advice because we tell them to do everything backwards. I think it's inverted. So I think uh, you should spend your early adulthood finding a good husband and having your family. And once your kids get older, say your youngest is like 10 or 12, you can start making moves toward, okay, maybe I wanna do this You know, once they're out of school, maybe uh, once they're all grown up and moved out, maybe I wanna do this occupation or I wanna go to college for this. Yeah, you can start like going part-time to college, paying it a piece at a time. You can start preparing yourself for other things because there's a lot of life after. I'm 44 years old. Uh, My oldest two are in their 20s and moved out. The youngest two are still at home. And so I can do some stuff like this, you know, now I, I have a book that I wrote and I can come on and talk to you guys. I can do some more fun things. But I put in, you know, what, uh, about 18 years of child raising before I really got to that. And everybody told me I was doing it wrong. They were like, oh, you're, oh, it's such a shame. Your life's going to turn out horrible. You're, you're making the wrong choice. You're going to regret it. You're going to wish that you had your own money and your own job and blah, 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 blah. It's, that's not how it turned out for me. And I think that all women could do it that way. And they did. Like, we have a lot of uh, incorrect ideas about what life was like for women before feminism. They weren't all chained to stove and not allowed to leave the house and all that shit. That's all baloney. But what, I, what I'm trying to get at here is, like, each of you, when we talk about which choice you'd make, like the career or the babies, we've asked this before, and I'll let you keep going around, but usually it ends up being, well, I'm going to do what makes me happy. And if humanity dies, it dies. But men don't ever even really get that choice. Men don't ever even contemplate that. Men are like, well, the world needs to be built. You know, men don't get value just from being cute. Like, you guys could do nothing. You could just sit there, and every word that comes out of your mouth can be absolutely R-worded, and you can be total airheads and be totally good for nothing. And as long as you're cute, Some man is going to love you and pay your bills and give you whatever you want and do whatever he needs to do to make you happy. Men don't have that. Men have to provide value or nobody gives a shit about them. And even when they do provide value, people still don't give a shit about them. Men have always been expendable. They're always going to be expendable, according to the world. That's just how it is. So men know, like, well, if the concrete needs to be laid, I'm going to lay the concrete. If the power lines are down, I'm going to go outside and, like, figure out how to get them back up. Men don't have this idea that there's no duty for them and that their life is just about them and what they want to pursue. It's just not like how how the male mindset works. And the way we raise women now, it didn't used to be that way. 
But the way we raise it now, most young women have no, like if I asked you what's a duty you have to the world outside yourself, I doubt you'd have anything for me. But if anybody does, please let me know. Does anybody here think they have a duty to society outside of themselves? Isn't it to birth kids and take care of them to produce more, like to pro grow the human humanity or whatever? I would humans. say, that's what I would say. I'd say we have a duty to continue the human race. But in times past, when I've asked girls on this panel that question, they all say no. They say, I don't have a duty to have kids. You can't tell me I gotta have kids. Chair one said she doesn't really want kids. Uh, the girl over here in the green top said she probably doesn't want kids. How many of you want kids? Okay, a few of you do, and several of you don't. So, I mean, that would be great if women were doing their duty, but they're not. They're, the average American woman's having like 1.8 kids, and childlessness will reach an all-time unprecedented high within the next seven years. The majority of women of fertile age will not have children and will just be working in the future. And that's a huge problem. And I think that it's a big mistake to raise women and train them to have this mindset that, well, it's just about me and what I want. It's about me and my dreams. And it's about, like, don't you think that that's probably like a bad idea? Anybody? I think it might be a little unfair to put this extreme ultimatum on us that, like, um, I get it, what you're saying, you know, the population has to go on. I just don't want to like put this question on me that like, oh, I'm not doing my part in saving humanity. I just, I don't know. We might not want to, but that's reality. And you know, we, so what if um, men just, what if we had a panel of men and they were like, yeah, you know, what I really wanna do, I wanna start my World of Warcraft guild. I'm just really hey. passionate about Warcraft, <laughs> you know? And I really don't feel like I should have to get up and go to work and run things. I just really don't feel like you know, I know the water treatment plants need somebody to like provide clean drinking water, but what about me and my dreams? What about me and my goals? Do you think that society would be like, well, that's okay, uh, George, don't worry about it. Just, just concentrate on your Warcraft guild. And if people start dying from, you know, untreated drinking water, fuck them. You know what I mean? It's just like, it's fine to sit there and say, well, I don't think this is fair to me, but that's completely delusional. That's not reality. I mean, response, life or? isn't life isn't fair. Where did you get this idea that like you should just be able to do what you want and it's all about you? I mean, I, I, mean, I agree with that statement. Life isn't fair. I just uh -huh. I want to do what I want. I mean, if that involves being selfish and you know signing away humanity, so be it. Okay, so why should a man marry you then? What? If that's your mindset. If that's your attitude, why would any man on this planet ever marry you? Any guy who ever dates you should watch this podcast. Um, Wait, and hear what you just said. Before I, before you give in, uh, Rachel the answer, <laughs> can you just repeat that one more time, just the way you said it? What? Something about well, I'm selfish, and if humanity has to wither away so I can get what I want, so so I'm so selfish for pursuing a nursing degree, wanting to help others. I'm very selfish, and if I want to sign away humanity, so be it. If so, if the entailment is that. Humanity cease to, ceases to exist, but you get what you want. Uh, fair trade-off? Sure. So, and like I said, like I said, you can, you can do that. It's a free country. It's a free country. But if I were any man who was going to date you, I would hear you say that, and I would be like, nope, because this chick is not going to be loyal. She's not going to think about me. She's going to put herself first. She doesn't really care as long as she gets what she wants. And she thinks that that's fine. You can go as far as to refer them to this podcast and put them on any future dating profile that I said this. <laughs> and I literally will not give it. Like, I'm just saying that. Like, um, my main goal in life is not to be um, a stay-at-home wife um, or uh, a, like a, a good wife or any... What's for that goal? matter of the fact, I don't want to like... What's your goal? I, if, if I never marry a man, then so be it. So I don't know what you are saying with the whole um, who wants to marry you. I don't think I ever put it out that I want to marry someone. So, <laughs> All right, so what's your, what's your goal? What's this big dream you have that's 
worth, you know, humanity has to die. I never get married. I end up alone. It's fine because I have my dream. What's the dream? I mean, I... I like I like nursing. I want to be a nurse anesthesiologist. I want to help out in the OR room and with surgeries. Um, I know that you're asking this as a hypothetical question. I just don't really think that the entire world revolves around me and what I do. Um, and so I I don't know where you're getting this. Oh, I have to you know sign away humanity and like end the world. I, didn't say, I, didn't say I know I know, but, but you're putting saying, these pretty heavy I'm ultimatums if your on mindset me. Mindset was the common mindset. We'd all be screwed. Mm -hmm. But but let's just take you. Let's just say okay, all the other women are gonna have the babies, and you're the only one who decides not to. Mm -hmm. uh, how long do you think being an OR nurse anesthesiologist is gonna be fun and fulfilling for you? For the rest of my life, as long as I want it to be, and then I'll travel. I don't, I, I honestly, I mean, as, as of right now, I'm not saying my viewpoint won't change later. I just like having kids and being um, a wife isn't my goal. It's not my dream. And you know, this is America. We can say what we want and do what we want. And that's what I'm saying. Oh yeah. I, I'm saying you absolutely can. Of course you have the option. I'm not going to stop you. I'm not suggesting that anyone pass a law that prevents you from following your dream of being an OR nurse anesthesiologist. But as someone much older than you, I'm going to tell you right now, I will be shocked. I will eat my hat. If in 20 years you come back to me and you say, oh my gosh, you were so wrong, Rachel. Being an OR nurse anesthesiologist is everything I thought it would be. I love the grind. It's so much fun. It's so fulfilling for me. I'm sure I'm glad that I never got married and had a family because now like, I can do this and travel. Like, I'll, I'll just be shocked because all everybody does that when they're oh. 20 or 25. Oh, go, go. Andrew had an input. Would love to hear it to help bridge a gap on this. So we'll ask the question to the panel, what's your ideal man? I suppose um, perhaps the question could be, uh, what does a guy have to bring to the table to get you? Actually, one quick preamble preface question on this one. Uh, if you got 80% of everything that you want in your ideal partner, would you be happy with that? Going around the table, starting with you, go ahead. No. No? Okay, it would be settling? It would be what? Would it be settling? I think it should be equal. I don't think I'd be happy if it was, you know, 0, 80. I think it should be fair either way. Wait, can you repeat the question back to me just so I make sure? You said sure. if I got 80% of the whole relationship you're saying? No, you got 80. So, like, let's say you have 10 things you want in a partner. You okay. want a guy who's funny. Okay. You want a guy who makes this much money. You want a guy who's uh, tall. You want a guy who is charismatic, whatever. You have a list of 10 things, and you get 80% of those things. So, uh, you get eight of the 10 things that you want. Mm -hmm. um, this list could be longer. It could be shorter. In any case, you get 80% of everything you want in your ideal partner. Would you be happy with that? I would be satisfied. Okay. What about you? Yeah. Yeah, what? Like, I'd be satisfied. Okay. Um, I think so. I think that'd be good. I would be happy. You know, there's always room for improvements over no time. Improvement. For... Oh, no. 80, well, then. No, there is no improvement. Is it what? 80 flat or Eight, is it you get, 80 working up? You get 80, per, all the things you want in your perfect <laughs> partner, you get 80%. I feel I want like 100. my perfect partner would grow for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> it's not it's not your perfect partner. It's 80% of your perfect partner. So there's no growth. So that's 0%. If yeah. I want my partner to be able to grow and if he's 80%. They grow. They only grow 80% though. So. Okay, so it's capped at 80. Yeah, sure. <laughs> no one's perfect. They'll still be happy. Okay, well, uh, <laughs> Chloe, what about you? I think it would depend, if we're assuming there's 10 things, it would depend what of the 10 things they have checked off. Because some things are more important than others. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, too. Yeah, I agree with that. Like, yeah. core values have to be there. Like, the eight has to be, or the core values have to be within the eight. But then mm -hmm. the other two, like, I don't know. Like, someone's height or someone's, yeah. like, yeah. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, your answer, so? It was, like, the same thing that she said. Okay, what about you? It has to be 10. It has to be 100%. Awesome. Mm -hmm. has to be everything. Okay. All right. What about you? I'd be okay with that. 80%? Tiffany? 
Probably not, like 90%. You need not all oh, 90%. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So then going around the table, the question was, uh, what, I guess, what is, what's your ideal man? What does a guy need to bring to the table to get you? You can talk looks, you can talk personality, whatever. Go ahead. Um, personality comes first. I just need somebody to match my type of lifestyle pretty much because I travel a lot. So that's one of the main reasons why I don't really go out of my way to find somebody right now is because I would like to give my person 100% as I would like to receive 100%. So mm -hmm. number one would be matching my lifestyle and then secondary would come looks. So, yeah. Uh can you be a bit more concrete just like list out some things um i would say has to be compatible of course um has to be has to have good humor okay and funny and sure funny yeah. yeah um and be able to understand my like sarcasm and my um like personality because i'm i have a unique personality and i think some people don't understand it but yeah okay that and um i would say confidence other confidence okay what about you um they have to be tall mm, how tall at least above five ten five eleven and how tall are you five two okay what else um they have to be understanding they like she said follow your lifestyle but willing to like both ways both of you guys should be willing to adapt to each other's lifestyle Lexi what about you um I'm the same way with my height preferences and I'm also about 5'2 um minimum height you said 5'10 right yeah okay higher is like better but you know taller would what taller would be better but six feet yeah okay go um, ahead but yeah, I like athletes. I like someone who's fit. Um, mm -hmm. Are you? Do you do any sports? I did do softball. Softball. Mm -hmm. Any current? I just lift. Just lift. Okay. Anything else? Um, honesty, humor, Funny. effort. Effort. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? I don't think so. Pause. What about you? Um, I like people who are social, mm -hmm. funny, has a job, dressed as well, tall. Um, and I don't know, just likes to try new things, I guess. Any physical traits? Um, you said tall, right? Did yeah, you say tall? Okay. Like fit, you know, mm -hmm. moderately fit. Anything else? Um, on the top of my head, that's pretty much it. Okay. Yeah. Chloe, what about you? Um, someone who has appreciation for the arts, whether that be music or dance, acting, that's important to me. Um, someone who loves animals, I don't trust someone who doesn't like animals, uh, nor do I trust someone who animals don't like them. Um, but then I honestly prefer people who are closer to my height. Um, so I'd say my ideal range is anywhere from like 5'5 five, five to 5'8". Five, um, but uh, my the Honduran person I had dated, they were about 5'2", so they were a bit shorter than me. Um, and that was completely fine as well. Um, but yeah, someone funny, someone mature, um, who has good communication skills. Okay, what about you? Yeah, I think mental maturity is like the mm -hmm. most important thing for me. And along, or what comes with that maturity is um, being able to see like multiple perspectives. Like maybe you don't have my opinion but like you can see my side uh i like them wait what do you mean by that what what do you well, mean well like so you're saying let's say you're in a disagreement with your boyfriend or whatever mm -hmm. uh and so he's like no this is the way and you're like yeah but i still want you to see my side like i like i want him to acknowledge that he or like recognize that i have like a different opinion and then like be okay with that and he can have a different opinion do you know what i mean like okay. but he like he's open to seeing multiple perspectives of things and he's not closed-minded what, what if he he's like no this is the way like this is the truth i disrespect your opinion i then I i'm a, he's a opinion disrespecter that's that's a no-go no-go <laughs> no i think that's hot 
No, because <laughs> I think that's hot. <laughs> He's a professional opinion disrespecter. I feel like you should, or at least in like I my... I like women all Wait, just let her say, finish. Let her finish. Go ahead. I just feel like you should be able to see multiple perspectives. Like, your life view is not everyone's life view. And you need to be able to see other people's life view. But what if there is like a central truth? Like, what if there is the, a truth? Can you give me an yeah, example? Should you, well, yeah, should you see a serial killer's life view? <laughs> no, but... No. You should see, like, how they grew up and, like, maybe things that affected them to be that way and try to give them help. Yeah, but understanding them, like, understanding the, the idea of, like, um, you know, I, I can rationalize why you made a decision or rationalize why you didn't make a decision is different from agreeing or accepting those things. I'm not right? saying you have to agree with them. I'm just saying that you should. Or accept them, right. I'm not saying you should accept them. I'm just saying that yeah. you should listen to them and not like cut them off um, and just like understand that other people have different views and that your way is just like not the highway. You know what I mean? What if it is the right way? Like your way is obviously better than the way of a serial killer, right? It, I mean, I guess there are like general morals, but I'm just mm -hmm. saying more in terms of what well, we're talking about a relationship. So she just wants him to be understanding. Yeah, I want him to be understanding essentially. Hmm. Yeah, you brought it up. You had something on that? No, no, I thought she was going to say something different. Oh, uh, okay, all right. Uh, okay, what about you? Um, I would say honest, empathetic, um, athletic, or leads at least an active lifestyle. Are you? Active. Yeah, I lift, I do rock climbing, I do jiu-jitsu. What belt are you? I just started. It's oh, just okay. been like six right. months, but I just like picking up active yeah. hobbies. And actually, Ellen, going back to you, I don't know if we finished, if you, you had more. In fact, in your notes, you said uh, you're open to many topics, such as what you look for in a guy. So maybe there's a bit more as far as what you look for in a guy. Um, I guess like I like humor. Did I mention that I like humor? I feel funny. like okay. like my dad's very funny. I feel mm. like so like I want a partner that's funny. Um, funny. Sure. Anything else? Um, I like ambitious men. Like they mm. strive for something and they're always working on themselves. And doesn't have to be like money or like career related. It can be just you know lifestyle or working on bettering like communication or anything like that. All right. Anything else, or that's pretty much it? Or That's pretty much it. Anything on the phys physical front? On the physical front? Yeah, height, um, ripped, shredded. Not really. Are I you mean, a chubby I, chaser? I like guys. You like fat guys? I like guys that, um, or I would prefer if like they like worked out, because mm -hmm. I like to. You work out too? I, I do yoga. All Hot right. Yoga. Okay, cool. Yeah. Anything else for you? Um, Just. I guess like the, our moral values have to align. Um, Are you religious? No. Oh, okay. And I wouldn't want my partner to be really religious either. I just don't think that works. Are you agnostic, atheist? Um, just atheist. Okay. Is your family religious at all? Yeah, they're religious. What are they? Hindu. Hindu. Okay. All right. Were you raised yeah, Hindu? Yeah, I was, or? I was raised okay. Hindu. Do your parents have any objections to your? Uh, atheism or um no i mean they want me to date you know more or less within my race do you do you eat beef in front of them no i just i mean i respect what they want if they say don't cook beef in my house i'm not gonna do that mm -hmm. hmm. okay uh what are you looking for um i would say honesty for sure okay. um and someone who is like fit i guess or average like mm. and like goal oriented and i don't know i don't really do relationships, so I don't really, yeah. Mm. And then <laughs> Tiffany, uh, Tiffany. For me, the most important thing is being smart, and then being tolerant. You? Huh? Being tolerant? Like, be, like being tolerating of me. Because you're annoying. Sort of, yeah. They have to tolerate your. They have to be calm. Conduct. And they have to be smart. There's nothing smart. more I hate more than dumb men. It just <laughs> pisses me off. <laughs> okay. A lot of dumb men at UCSB? And providers. They have to be providers. And a provider. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have a uh, quick follow-up to this, Brian. I do also. Perhaps we have the same yeah. one. But right before I... Um, there's a couple chats coming in here. I'm going to play one and then... Guys, we do have a bit of a delay on these, but they'll come Hail in. Hail and in. well met. 
Just Lord a sec. Paladins donated two hundred. Yo, Paladins, thank you, man. Cents. You like a man who tells you what to do and is never wrong? Hit me up after the show. <laughs> is this for Tiffany? She does. Unfortunately, she does have a, a boyfriend. So um, sorry, Law Paladins. But um, any other girls? Maybe I don't know. Thank you, Law Paladins. Really good to see you in the chat. Uh, Andrew, you had a follow up. Was it what do they bring to the table? No, it was uh, just to piggyback on this. Actually, before you asked that question, I was going to ask what their what their core values are. So, what are just very quickly what your core values are, and then you can piggyback with the question of what you bring to the table. Is this for the whole panel, or yeah, okay. yeah, just very briefly, what are your core values? Core values. Chair, core values. Chair one. Um, I would say, I think just love is like the most important it's beautiful. I, <laughs> so beautiful i mean i think just being there for somebody is most important i think intelligence like she said is also very important so intelligence is a core value andrew sure. just to help them out what would be an example of a, a core value I actually, uh, I actually don't want to help out on this. Uh, oh, I, I okay. just want to know the answer right. to what they think. I, mean, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think people are confused as to what a core value is, right? So, uh, Chair Two, what's a, what are your core values? I think I agree with Chair One, like mainly love. Okay, Chair Three. Um, like the core values of what I look for in a person, like. No, no, no. Your core values. Oh, myself. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that I think religion's pretty important. I think if you're kind of, I don't know, but I think not pressuring into anything is really important to me. Yeah, that's all I can think of right now. Pause. Okay, Chair, Chair Four, what's, what are your core values? I think I missed a little bit. Oh, just what, what are your core values? What are your core values? That's the question. Um, I mean, I, I gift give a lot. She's a gift giver. She uh -huh. gifts, gives, gifts, gifts, gifts. Okay. Gifts. Chair five, what are your core values? Um, probably compassion, um, as well as I like to call myself a lifelong learner. So that just means every day making sure you go out there and you learn something new and you better yourself in some way. Okay. Chair six, core values. Um, empathy. I really look for like kindness. Um, I always want, and then like self improvement. Well, it's not, it's not, it's not what you're looking for. It's oh, your, sorry, sorry. Your, My core values, your like core values. always, yeah, your core yeah. Values. empathy, kindness, um, and then self improvement, just being like a good natured human being. That's okay. what I hope for. Core values. Next. Um, uh, they have to be on the same page. No, your core values. Oh, mine. Yeah. Like, okay, I guess your like, core values. Um, uh, like kind, yeah, empathetic. Uh, like, I guess, mm -hmm. politically, like, I care about women's rights, I care about reproductive rights, things like that. Okay, next, okay. core values. Um, I'd say always trying to be better, like, never just giving up, and there's something that, you know, you can always work on. Okay, core um, values. Positivity, family, life. Um, Christianity and being self-aware. Mm -hmm. I would like to point out before Brian asks his next question that none of you said duty. None of you said anything that was duty related. Uh, but anyway, Brian, go ahead. Yeah, sure. So uh, you guys all listed kind of what you want men to bring to the table. You guys had uh, various answers to that, different answers. Uh, what do you bring to the table? Go ahead. I bring exactly what I expect them to bring. So, mm -hmm. passion, commitment, um, just everything I would want, I would bring as well. Do you want a guy to pay for the first date? No, no. I don't think you don't need care. to. Okay. I mean, yeah. All right. Uh, Sina, what about you? I bring... If Wait, hold on. Just to be... In your... Uh, questionnaire, you disagree that women should go 50-50 on the first date. Um, yeah. So, I, so the man should pay on the first date. No, I, I don't think they should go 50-50. I think it doesn't really matter. 
doesn't matter whether she pays the full bill or he pays the full bill. So kind of, I guess I could have put 50-50 on that one, but yeah. So you don't, you're fine with, you're fine with it being 50-50 then? Sure. You just don't think it has it doesn't matter. to be 50-50? No. Okay, all right. Sina, um, what do you bring to the table? The fact that I'll be a housewife for them, because if it's a provider man, like, I don't think, this might be controversial, like, I don't think women, if you're not providing for your men, you can't bring much to the table. So, like, if mm -hmm. I'm willing to be a housewife for them, or I'm willing to cook and clean for them while they work, I mm -hmm. think that's enough. Okay, hold on, I'm gonna let hey, chat and well met. Here. Lol Paladins donated $200 and two cents. She has a boyfriend? Doesn't bother me, just send me a whisper. I'm playing on the Knight's Lair server. He doesn't need to know if we clear Wailing Caverns together. <laughs> Wailing Caverns. Uh, by the way, guys, the whatever guild, Andrew needs to freaking create his mage. Uh, we are playing, there's the whatever guild, we're playing on Knight's Slayer for the anniversary World of Warcraft Classic Realms. We're on Horde's side. Join the Discord, discord.gg slash whatever if you want to join the uh, the guild. So, Is that hardcore though, Brian? No, not hardcore. Just uh, okay. regular regular PvP. PvP. Okay. Yeah, not hardcore. Um, where were we? Uh, what do you bring to the table? Um, loyalty for sure. I also, I don't want to be in a marriage where I solely depend on my husband because I feel like that gives him a lot of things like that he can hold over my head so I definitely want to be able to be financially independent and take care of myself and my kids and give them the life I want for us aside from my husband's salary why do you assume that he would hold things above your head just if like if I don't have anything and I solely rely on him for everything I have to ask him can I get this can I get that um I feel like also, like with prenups or anything like that, if I probably wouldn't divorce a man I didn't want to be with if I knew I would be homeless or I wouldn't be in that great of a state after. So you wouldn't sign a prenuptial agreement? Mm, I don't, I think I would because I would have my own money. So it doesn't yeah, matter. I mean, and, if, if you're, do you plan on having children at some point? Yes. And it's probably going to be optimal for you to stay at home with them, right? I don't think so. You're going to outsource it. What do you mean? You're going to outsource. You're going to outsource your children's raising, being raised by other people. I, or would you rather raise them? I'm definitely going to be a big influence in my children's life. It's also part of why I want to go to the PA program for the lifestyle balance so I'm definitely gonna feel like I can also with the help of my <coughs> partner my partner and I should both be able to raise our kids yeah but I jobs. mean for, for just talking about what's optimal let's say man he has enough money so that you can stay at home with the kids it would be optimal for you as the mother to stay home with the kids rather than outsourcing their raising to somebody who's not their mother right I don't think I would need to rely on someone else that's not their mom. I think, like, of course, you might need daycare and nannies. Well, that's outsourcing, right? Okay, but I would probably go with one of my family members, and I... It, that's still wouldn't. outsourcing, right? How many I, kids do you want? Probably just, like, two. Two kids? Okay. Um, all right. Can I ask something? Yeah. Is, are you saying it's not possible to have a career in kids? That's like no, of course not. It's possible. I'm talking about what's optimal. You it, think that it's a good idea to outsource the raising of your children to other people? It's not a good I, idea. I'm sorry. Why would it I mean, be? men do it all the time, so I don't really see what your point is. What do you mean? What do you mean, men do it all the time? Can men not have a career and raise kids? No, no. no. So that's the it? that's the optimal portion, right? Is that the man has a career, right? So last I checked, in case you don't know this, but men can't breastfeed, for instance. Women can do that. It's the healthiest way to raise a child is on breast milk, not with formula. We have all the scientific data in planet Earth at this point to prove that. So at least within the first year of the child's life, the mom probably should be at home with the child. If that is the case, then the father probably is going to be working, right? 
yes but i mean yeah, i've been doing so, it for centuries i can you not breast like breast pump and give the milk out yeah sometimes out sometimes that? women have all sorts of different troubles with this they can't produce enough milk or they can't pump enough milk they can't there's all sorts of things which come up when it comes to breastfeeding so i mean optimally the best thing to do is to let the baby latch on and drink right that's the that's how that's how we've been doing this for several thousand years now it works pretty good and they get very healthy uh, because they get the correct nutrition from their mom. And by the way, a baby's entire immune system is essentially formed uh, off of those nutrients. So yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty good for the children. And if that's your view on it, then. Um... What, uh, well, I mean, what's controversial about that view? A baby's entire, uh, they're literally, like this will affect their IQ, it'll affect their development, it affects everything, it affects their immune system. If you give a child who's developing poor nourishment, you're setting them up for failure. You'll set them up to be lower IQ, have behavioral issues, have all sorts of problems. Of course, it's optimal for their mom to be there with them, giving them affection and feeding them, right? Okay, but where's the dad at? If he's the dad working? is working to enable but, the fact that the mom okay. can do that. But it takes it takes two to take to, to make <coughs> a kid, right? So it should take two to raise that kid. And if you need to, to reach out kid. and if like if she wants to work because she doesn't want to depend on her husband then her getting care for her child shouldn't be a problem at all well it's that's not what we're talking about though you just you're just switching the issue we're talking about what's optimal not what is possible there's all sorts of arrangements which are possible you could technically uh raise a, a kid in the playboy mansion but do you think that that's going to be good for the kid no of course not no of course not right so it's not optimal so the thing is is like if we're talking about what's optimal not but what's possible how are you going to say what's obviously best for a kid is if mommy their kid. can stay at home with baby and feed baby breast milk and take care and nurture baby obviously that that's optimal well can you give okay. me a single scenario where, where there's yes, a bet where there's actually, something more optimal than that so no i'm not saying more optimal but what if that's not a possibility so my son had a tongue tie and that's a medical a problem what? as a tongue tie it's a medical problem as to why he couldn't What's latch tongue on tie? it is underneath your tongue it's the thing that is like right there it's too long so you have to get it cut you have to go through a procedure Mm -hmm. to be able to latch onto your mother okay so there are reasons and there's you know it's not just yeah breast milk well, is I, don't, best, I don't but... even understand in that context didn't you just get the procedure and then breastfeed the kid i mean yeah you could but do you want to cut your child's well, tongue what's the problem <laughs> what do you mean is cutting your child's tongue optimal but well let's assume for a second that in this one case where almost nobody has this problem sorry we go, okay, multiple people we'll make, have yeah, this problem i hang had this on, problem hang on hang on, hang like, on hang, let me make yeah. the case and i'll let you respond i promise right uh let's say in this one case you had to make alternative arrangements or you had to pump or something like this it was less than optimal uh pointing at the outlier and saying that that's a standard we should promote seems silly to me yeah, I'm sure that there's going to be individual cases of health issues with children where you're going to have to make less than optimal decisions because you're in a less than optimal situation. But for the vast, vast, vast majority of all of humanity who exists right this second, clearly a woman staying at home with her children is optimal in comparison to outsourcing their children. That, that, that seems obvious, right? No, it doesn't. It, it doesn't? Because you can't just say that everything, like that it's optimal. Like, the world is ridiculous right now. Like, it's not like it was back in the day. It's not, it, that's not how things go anymore. It, because, Bill, yeah, it's not how it goes. If you say, well, I just demand that I go work and outsource my child care, then yeah. But the truth is, is that there's tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, and millions of families all over, uh, all over the world, all over the United States, all over South America, all over North, all over the place, who have dad go to work for very little money, and still, because they do all sorts of budget cuts in their homes, maybe they only have one vehicle, right? It's tough, but they make sure that mom can stay at home with kids because, well, they're gonna get the best nutrition possible and they're gonna have their mom. What could possibly be more important to a baby than having their mom? So let me ask, does that change how the child turns out? Oh yeah, significantly changes. So the then how does hey, dad, on, give you some then how does I'll dad, can I add something? So, so here's the examples. Here's the examples. Yes. Uh, not only does it affect their immune system, it affects their IQ, it affects their physiology, it affects their height, it affects their weight, it affects long term 
uh, problems inside of a human being's health. It also affects behavior. It affects behavior because you have detachment problems. You have all sorts of issues that come uh, with the feeling of abandonment when childcare is outsourced away from the mom. And this is one of the most psychologically studied phenomenon on planet Earth, along with the nutritional values. And we see the results of mass inflammation in children, ADHD at all time highs, depression, all of these different things. Much of this has been linked to the idea of the plastics that are inside of food, the lack of nourishment, lack of breastfeeding, and formula feeding. Um, so I would say <coughs> I would agree Maybe in the first year a child is born that a mother could take time off to really, really tend to her child. But my mom has worked a full-time job since forever. And I mean, I, are you, I feel like I turned out pretty good. I got my... Yeah, but, but here's the thing. Nobody's disputing that you can't have good results by doing things in a less than optimal way. Nobody's disputing that. Like, for instance, I suppose that I could start a bonfire with a hand grenade, right? Or I can start it with a match. I would just say that starting it with the match would be more optimal than starting it with a hand grenade. Can so I the idea here, hang on, the idea here is just to say, right, that yes, you can have, you can have good results in good children and, and people who are even, even with that. But I'm just saying that if we look at the stats and the data, we can clearly see that most people have less than good results. And who knows how you would have turned out had mommy stayed home with you the entire time. Could be vastly different. Can I say something? Did you do everything the optimal way? And did your parents do everything the optimal way if you're putting the standard on everyone else? Let's say for a second they didn't. Do you understand that when you make an argument, a two quay quo fallacy, which is what you're doing right now, what about you? wouldn't matter. Let's say for a second, my parents did the opposite. They were both feminazis and they ran around with blue hair, right? They hated their children. They thought I was complete scum and they completely malnourished me. What in the world would that have to do with what was optimal or what wasn't? I'm just saying that you're holding everyone to this ridiculous standard of every single not thing holding having anybody to be to an any optimal standard. way. All I said was what is optimal, what is not, I'm looking for an argument for why I'm wrong. What standard have I held you to? Do you guys agree that it's optimal? Hang yeah. on, let me answer the question. What okay, standard ideally, have I held you to? If US gave longer maternity leave and we were able to be with our children for that full one year, I guess I would say it's optimal that many families <coughs> cannot survive on one person's salary, especially with the economy. So right now, it's not Oh, yeah, optimal. well, then you need to explain why it is that it's the uh, least rich demographic. The poorest people have the most amount of children. What if, what the if you know? The poorest people who have the most amount of children also right have mom stay home while dad works right they're underneath that income threshold most of the time and the, interestingly enough what happens is the opposite when you have middle class they try to do tend to do what's called family planning right and so they want to have kind of a posher lifestyle and oftentimes they do that at the expense of the children I have but the, a question. the i mean the demographic has most kids is poor poor people though right <laughs> How long do you think then a woman should optimally stay home with their child? What age is it okay for them to then resume their work? I think that they should stay home with them until they're uh, nearing adulthood. But we send kids to school for the whole day when they're in kindergarten. Do you guys want yeah, to I work think, I think they, hang on, I think, I think they should be homeschooled. Okay, that was and going I think to my question. Of you using think our, they should just best, stay at home the I think time? that instead of using our best, our best and brightest to go into office buildings all the time, right? And, uh, you know, go work as, uh, you know, sandwich makers and work in the service industry, which is where we send them all the time, right? Most of them aren't, aren't being doctors and lawyers. They're mostly working as waitresses and in the service industry. I think instead of wasting women there, we should take our best and brightest and have them raising the next generation of the best and brightest. That's what I think. I, I say that because I, I actually was homeschooled um, my entire life, essentially. Um, uh, but there's definite bad things to homeschooling as well. 
Um, you don't get the social connect you need between people of your own age, so that hinders you completely. No, nope, completely the opposite. In fact, the public school system, because of the way that it's set up, if you homeschool, all of the extracurricular activities which your property taxes go to pay for, you can enroll your children in all of them without ever sending them to that school. So if you want them to be on the wrestling team, the football team, the volleyball team, the cheerleading squad, or any of these different things, guess what? You can just send them right along because your tax dollars pay for all that. The school can't tell you anything different if you're inside the curriculum. So that's completely wrong. The socialization aspect of it has been well studied. They're not antisocial. They graduate much earlier than children outside of the homeschool curriculum. They do better long term in most longitudinal studies than people go to public school. But I was homeschooled, yes. And that was not the case where I lived. Not to mention, I was not homeschooled by my parents. I was homeschooled by a computer, which is what a lot of homeschoolers are doing nowadays. They get, they sit in front of their computers. Well, their family yeah, still goes off Yeah, what do you think you do in a public school? Okay, but that raises the same point. Then, Man, do you not feel more point, neglect then? if you're being kept at home, away from everyone else, and your family is then also you're not being kept away from anyone else? See, these are these are this is full of uh, red herrings and kind of false anecdotes. It's How are not. you being kept away from everybody else because you don't have to go to a peewee prison where you're locked in a room for eight hours a day, right, and forced to learn shit you don't care about? Let's that assume... seems like it's completely suboptimal, in Let's fact. Assume the normal... You know why that exists? That system exists for the, because working parents need babysitters. That's why school lasts eight hours, even though every single study we look at shows that young children do not do well when you go past is somewhere around three to four hours of daily education. They don't do well. But, but we make the, work, the, uh, the day that long so that parents can go and work and be cogs in the economy. Does that sound like it's a good deal? It doesn't sound like a good deal to me. Speaking from my own personal upbringing and experience as someone who was homeschooled my entire life, when you're growing up and you see the quote-unquote, let's say, a normal childhood, you see kids going off to school, hanging out with their school friends, participating on these clubs that are in school, doing all this. When you don't get that as a child and you were not allowed to get that as a child in that normal experience, you feel a certain way about it. Almost anyone I know who is also homeschooled also has felt that certain way about it. And it takes a little bit to get over that because you're jealous for a while of people who got to do that. What, what, I'm sorry, didn't you say that you graduated at 14 and went yes. to college? Yeah, I guarantee you that most of these public school kids who had to stay in the Pee Wee prison until they were 18 and their senior year in high school, they were taking nothing but electives because they just needed a warm seat so the school got federal funding, would vastly have preferred to have graduated at 14 years old and gone on with their life. And every day I wish I had stayed behind and gotten to live a normal What was the experience. advantage of staying behind? Why couldn't you live a normal life at 14 after you graduated? Because being a 14-year-old in a class with a bunch of 20-something-year-olds, you're not going to make many friends. You weren't going to, what classes were you going to with 20 something year olds at 14? College classes? You know what? You weren't enrolled in college, going to college at 14. That's ridiculous. What did I do in between the years I graduated at? I have no idea, but you weren't going to college and, and hanging out in rooms with 20 year olds in college rooms That's learning. What That's happens ridiculous. Show when me a single picture of this. So show, me, show me any, any, anything backing up that at 14 years old, you were going to college rooms with 20 year olds and learning advanced calculus are ridiculous. The most ridiculous thing you've said all night. When kids graduate early, are they then expected to just sit there and wait until they are of the normal college age to then attend college? No, the learning doesn't doesn't end just because you graduated. That is also absurd. You can take what, I didn't what say are that. called college you can you can take what are called college pre prep classes. You can go to trade schools. You can Not do all sorts of different things with you your education. You can't go to college preparatory. You know, why classes. why is the expectation that you sit there like a drooling idiot looking at the wall? Why can't you okay, pursue well, music? You're saying why can't you pursue it's art? Not why can't you pursue cooking in other interests? Hang on, let me ask a question that you can answer. Why can't you pursue all of these things that you want to pursue exactly? Because I want to get, if I graduate early, and my goal is to graduate with a degree, yeah. then in my head, how it was when I was graduating and went off to college, if I don't go straight into college, I have now wasted my extra years of graduating early. Why? 
because first I all, wanted college to get isn't for everyone out of the way. Yeah, first of all, college isn't for everyone. Right, it's not. And it's not, a, and it's not even a boon for most people who go through it. Most people go through it, they end up with a lot of debt, and they only make a slight, a slight amount more of money, and that's after years of still being at an entry-level job. That's one. So the second thing is, is having your, your general schooling and general education behind you at 13, 14 years old and you're on par with your 18-year-old peers gives you every advantage to start doing other pursuits earlier, be it music, be it trade schools, be it cooking pursuits, hobbies, whatever it is that you want to do. This idea that you have to be perpetually schooled is nonsense. It's nonsense. Most people run on passion, and when they work around things that they're passionate about, they tend to make the most amount of money and have the highest in the happiness indexes. So it's like, why do we have to co continuously push down everybody's throat that they need to get a degree in something worthless? You know how many political science degrees have sat here and they don't know anything about, about politics? How many women with different degrees have sat here and, uh, and they have a degree in psychology, don't know anything about psychology? This is not, college is not about rewarding the best and brightest. If it was, not everybody could go. Can I ask a question? Did you go to um, like public school or private school? Or were you homeschooled? Uh, it was a mix. I didn't like school. School's not for smart people. School's not where smart people go. School is where smart people leave. That's what smart people do. They get the fuck away as fast as they can so that they can go pursue things that are, it's like, I remember watching a video of the guy who owns Virgin. Okay, you, know, you might have heard of Virgin, Vir Virgin Travel, Virgin uh, Mobile, all of this. And I remember him sitting down in a room full of suits who were multimillionaires, and he laughed at them because they all went through their entire life getting degrees and playing the stock market and this and that. And he said, I'm the only billionaire in the room, and I'm a ninth grade dropout. The thing is, is like, no, I don't think that uh, education has to do with a schoolroom. I think that you need to teach kids how to read, write, do arithmetic, basic English. Uh, right now, your graduation rates tw at 12th grade, they're, they're walking out and they can't read at a sixth grade level. This is, who's this helpful to? Does society seem like it's smarter than it was when people only had an eighth grade education? Because it doesn't seem like that to me. I'm going to let a couple chats come through because there's a bit of reverse around the table. Should a guy pay for a first date? Yes. Yes. I think it depends on who asks the person out. Have you ever asked a guy out on a date? Yeah. More often than not. How many first dates have you been on? I don't know, a couple. I don't, I don't keep a tally of them. Can you move your Who mic Who is more likely way? to pay? Move your mic this way for me. Yeah. Um, of all the first dates you've been on, more often than not, who pays for the date? I don't I mean, most often it's 50 50. Um, okay. I don't know. I, I like I thought the you said it, it depends really, who asks. Most asked. often it's 50 50. Most often. I mean, I, yes, I don't ask guys out a lot. It's happened a couple times. Um, but that you've asked guys out? Yeah. So how many times have guys asked you out? I don't the know. I'm mean, 23. Time. It's been like so a going, long time. So you're going, you're going 50 50 on the dates where the guy asks you out? Yes. I mean, okay. sorry. I mean, no, if happens. the guy asked me out, then he would have to pay full. And if I asked the guy out, then I would have to pay full, ideally. But if he asked me We're to go getting 50 very 50, conflicting would... answers here. But so in what instances do you go 50 50? Uh, the times where you guys both simultaneously ask each other out. If at he the says, same I want to go 50 50, we'll go 50 50. How many times has that happened? Couple. I'm not going to disagree. I'm not going to say you should pay for it. Or okay, I sure. Pay sometimes guys will. Whatever guess, the mood, preface. whatever the situation is, I don't know. Okay. Um, uh, Ellen, did you, you saw the bow video? I don't know. Did you give your response? Would you bow for a guy? Um, like if it was like a traditional thing. And no, like, he just wanted you to bow for him. I, I don't see why I would need a bow. Like, to be, test your respect? No. And test your submissiveness, I guess? No. Wouldn't do it? Okay. And then uh, who should pay on the first date? I would prefer if the guy pays for me. Why is that? I, don't, I just, that's my preference. Okay, what informs your preference? A tra just, traditional gender roles? Um, I mean, I, I would be okay paying as well. How many first dates have you been on? Uh, like four. Did you pay for, on, uh, did you go 50-50 on any of them? I went 50-50 on one of them. And the other three, the guy paid? 
Yeah. Did you say, hold on, sir? No, no, no. I insist on 50-50 or did you let them pay? We just, we just split it. Oh, like when... The times they paid, the three times they paid. I just let them pay. You didn't, you didn't protest out of your feminism? Or I said I can pay and then they were like... You didn't insist, though. But I didn't insist. You didn't but insist. Okay. I did suggest it. What about you? Who should pay on the first date? Um, I'm the type of person to fight over me being the one paying. I don't like people paying for things for me. I feel like I owe something to them afterwards. Mm -hmm. So I prefer to pay for myself regardless. Sure. And even dates I go on with my partner, I mean, I'll pay the full thing, too. And sometimes he'll pay the full thing. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Pause. I like to play card roulette. Mm -hmm. So what is that? You kind of just like ask the waiter to close their eyes and whatever card they pick, that's who pays. Uh -huh. It's just like, um, like okay. a fun oh, game. Oh, come on. <laughs> and all the dates you've been on. No, not all, all of, of them. All of them that you can tally up. Was the man way more likely to pay than you? Um, actually, no, but I don't mind. Um, and the reason why that is is because usually I'm the one who picks the restaurant. And I'm like a foodie, so we usually go to more high-end places, and that's why I always offer like my Did own Did you money. say you were dating somebody right now? I'm going on dates, but no. Yeah. The last date you went on, who paid? Um, it was 50-50. And the day before that? Um, probably him. I don't know. And what about the one before that? Probably 50-50. Probably or was? Oh, well, I don't know. I don't really. Keep you don't remember tally. who paid on on three dates ago? <laughs> um. Well, I mean, I haven't gone on many like as of recently. So you've gone on many. Great. Okay. So if you've gone on many, no, she not many. She hasn't gone on many. Oh, I hasn't gone on many. Yeah. Okay. But well, what does recently mean? Um. Recently, like a day, just a few days ago. But before that, probably like like a while ago. You know. How, how but, long is that? How long is a while ago? Um. Probably. Two weeks before I got my ankle injury, so around then. Well, how long ago was that? Like two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. So so you went on a date two weeks ago, and then the date you went on before that was how many weeks before that? Um, when I came back from Greece, so. Which was know, how long ago? Like four or five weeks ago. Okay, so within the last five weeks, you've gone on three dates, and you're saying that they've all been 50-50? Except, well, I'm sorry, two were 50-50 and one was not? Really? Yeah, I don't know. I haven't been on, like, many dates. I'm just, like, either at work or I'm traveling or doing my own thing. All right, yeah, let's I'm move. not concerned with the amount of dates you've been on. I'm just curious as to who has paid when you have been on them. I mean, it kind of, it really just, like, differs depending on, like, who chooses or who asks or, you know, if I want to play that game of card roulette. Okay. All right, let's move it on. What about you? I think the man is more likely to pay. I think also that if it's like a lot of first dates and stuff, I think it might be a good idea for the guy to pay if he wants to like put on this image that he can take care of you. But I think once you're in a relationship, especially for a while, like I've paid for things for my exes and I've had taken care of the food if we wanted to go, go out and eat. But yeah. Sure. What about you? Sina? I think men should pay. Okay. Um, I think, I don't think they have to, but they usually do. That's been your experience? Yes. Okay. Aventika, going back to you, you said that women should, you disagree that women should go 50-50 the entire relationship. What do you mean by that? I'm saying that, I mean, it's an option, you know, whoever wants to pay can pay. Like if I want to pick up all the bills for the rest of my relationship, but he wants to do something different. I don't like if I want to pay for all the restaurants, but then he wants to pay for all the like movies and other outings. They could do that. Uh, so you disagree with going fifty-fifty the entire relationship, or like it could be sixty-forty, you know, seventy-thirty. It just depends on what you make it as. Okay. Um, so I guess my confusion here, in relation to the bow video. It's weird to me, though, like you guys think that this is some grand, grand ask, but a lot of, not all of you, but a lot of women have an expectation that men do certain tasks or men have certain uh, duties when it comes to dating, courtship, relationships. 
Uh, some women might expect a man to open a car door, for example, might expect a man to protect you in some sort of scenario. But sp specifically when it comes to paying for first dates. So let's assume for a second that you're, and I'm uh, being charitable, I guess, on the cost of a first date. Let's say the cost of a first date is the equivalent to one hour of work for the man. They say he makes $20 an hour, the date is $20. This is actually probably very unlikely, but I don't know, he takes you out for a hot dog or a burger or tacos or something. Realistically, I think a lot of men are probably going to pay 50 to to $100 on a first date. Uh, if he works $20, hour, $20 an hour, a lot of men don't even make that much. That's five hours of work for him to take, treat you to a first date. So if women's expectation is men should pay for first dates or if they're the ones asking, they should pay for the date. The translation there, essentially what you're saying is men should labor for five hours to treat me on a date, but I can't do a bow, which takes no effort. That's where I'm confused. So going to you, you very, you were very much a, had a strong objection to the, to the request. If a boyfriend were to request that you bow, but you said the guy should pay for the first date. The entailment of that is that if he's working $20 an hour and he takes you out on a hundred dollar date, you're saying he has to work five hours. He, let's say he works a, uh, a physical labor job, construction job. He has to physically labor for five hours if he wants my time. How is this not worse than a guy asking for a bow? Me specifically? To you, because you said, I would never do a bow, but you want a guy to pay for the first date. I said I'd prefer it. Would, let me ask you a question. You go, you go on a date with a guy, he asks you out, you get a dinner, I don't know, it's 40, 60 bucks, whatever. The waiter comes and he says, two checks. Is there gonna be a second date with that guy? If I like his personality, yeah. So he has to make up for a detriment in his conduct by being more charismatic. I mean, or have a better personality. You said you would prefer a guy to pay for the first date. I would prefer it. Why? I think it's just like a nice gesture, but I wouldn't be opposed to paying myself. Okay. But it is a traditional gender role, right? I think it's, yeah, it's here, deemed that way. Let me ask the panel this. Uh, for any of you here, if a guy wanted to go 50-50 on a first date, waiter comes, he says two checks, you got to pay. Is there going to be a second date? No. No? No. No? Second date? Mm, no, not if he just says two checks. Like, no. If if he's like, talks about it, oh, why? Whatever. Why would he have to talk about it? I He's got to like, have your permission to go 50-50? No, I feel like it's more of like a respect thing than just to... What do you just mean to respect? to know we're going to go 50-50 than just saying, He needs like, to confer with you? No, like, if I wanted to pay. He needs to check to make sure you're willing. Yeah. If I wanted to pay, or if he wanted to pay for You guys but. are so... It's so entitled. <laughs> totally entitled behavior. Imagine if I, as a guy, said, you know what... She's got to check with, like my expectation as a guy is that you pay the entire bill for me and maybe I'll be considerate, but you have to consult with me first before I even consider going 50-50 with you. You would fucking laugh at that, dude. You'd be like, what the fuck? I mean, if I want to pay. Do you pay? I want to. What do you mean? I put my card on the thing, but they just, okay. they swap it out. You know, it's not. But I, my I confusion say. here is that you guys have all these expectations on guys. And it's like, but if we look at something very simple, look, I know some of you are okay with 50-50. Some of you would be fine splitting the bill. But there's enough women out there who would be like, absolutely not. If he wants to go 50-50, there's not going to be a second date. It's a done deal. It's like... And those same women will be like, they'll be total feminist too. They'll be like, no, I won't pay for the bill, blah, blah, I won't split. It's like, okay, so you won't bow for a guy which takes no effort, takes three seconds to do, but you, the entailment of you expecting a guy to pay for the entire bill is that if he's working a $20 an hour job and the bill's $100, 
The entailment of that is you expect a man to work five hours to be able to take you out. So what's a bigger ask? A guy saying, I would like a woman to bow to me, or you saying, every single time we hang out and we go to dinner, you have to work five hours of your life just for the privilege of getting to take me out. What's a bigger ask? Tell me. The dinner. Why? Because it's five hours versus three seconds of your time. Mm. So is the know, fair think, is the I, fair proposition then for that women should bow to men? It's if I got a fucking shovel, some bull. If I got a shovel for fucking five hours to take you out, I would bow. Okay, there but that's, that's on you though. Why is that you're on not, me? You're not capable enough to make like fifty dollars an hour or hundred dollars. Bro, an hour. y'all are hold on the average. And, y'all are eighteen. And, how many? How and much money? men and men actually want to pay for dates. Men naturally like providing yeah, women that's, they like. Sure. Women don't want to bow for men. They don't, women don't, don't want to be submissive. Be, we don't want to be. Okay. That's a feminist but mind virus. Does not equal wow. bowing. Bowing is weird. That is, it's like a form of worship. It's oh my. Bowing is so bowing much more is symbolic. Form, it's not a form of yeah, worship. Bow, bowing is not a form. Wait, so if an it's atheist. It's weird. Okay. And actually, men don't like maids. When what? women bow, bow to them and what? cook for them and clean for them and take they care don't of everything. Like, hold on, what? All, and, and cater to them all what? the time. No. That's, that's when men actually go out and cheat. Men like the chase. P- Tiffany, what the? What are you talking about? <laughs> men, just to be clear, so f- uh, men don't like it when, when women do all these things for them? Yeah. They they think they do, but they actually don't. I would disagree. Oh. No, oh my God, this yeah, is this is think, this is this is like think, oh. they think that they want a non-vexing, submissive woman, but what they really want is a woman who acts like a bitch all the time. What was I? Th- what were we thinking? We were no, way, that's I, that's we exactly right. Men love one. bitches. There's a whole book about here it I was, too. Here yeah, I was thinking news. that men prefer fake to news. have women who are completely non-vexing and uh, generally take care of their roles mm. in the in the home because that's what all of them report. But as it turns out, I was wrong. What they really want is somebody to be an annoying brat and vex them all day. Jeez, I wish that I had known that earlier. Total Tiffany, that's fake news, bro. That's, that's not, fake that news. That's not fake news. They so you're saying men want uh like quarrelsome, disagreeable, non-helpful, non-submissive women? That's is that what you think men want? Non. You said like. I submission doesn't equal bowing. If I well, say, that's, that's if I'm, what I would argue, wouldn't it I would be, argue wouldn't that, that exactly be submissive? I want you to do this. Wouldn't uh-huh. that be submissive? And you don't, you do it, and you don't. Oh, I want to have a conversation about it. I want to question it. Wouldn't you just do it? Wouldn't that be submissive? Men like submiss. Men like submission to an extent. When it's too much and the girl doesn't have her own mind and basically will bow down to them, they don't like it. What have you tried to do this with a man? Like what evidence? No. So but what, it's just, but how, so what that's just evidence, how men are. That's just what how evidence men are. do you have that this is true? I guess I Did you just make it up in your head? <laughs> No, it's it just sounds it's good, just right? It's just common knowledge. No, it just no, no. sounds it's, it's good. It's common knowledge. It's common. It just sounds good. No, it's common knowledge. From who? who the experience of the experiences of many women. Wait, so just to be yeah, clear, I think, I wait. Think, uh, one thing. I mean, one thing. Really quick. One thing. Really quick. Yeah. So when you say experiences of women, so the experiences of women are men will like you less if. You treat them well, you do nice things for them, you're helpful, you help them out with certain uh, household duties. You're saying men detest these, these things in women. Yes, and they, yes, and in they'd some much ways. Prefer, and they'd much prefer dealing with a woman who refuses to do these <laughs> yes, things. Yes, they hate it. They hate it. They hate, they, they hate, <laughs> they hate women who, who are submissive, what? essentially. <laughs> No, I think in a it's way... to an extent. She, no, I think she's saying, like, they get bored. Get bored. Yeah, they do. Okay, I have an input. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. You're talking about a man. I think you're talking about a boy. <laughs> to be honest, there's a difference. Wait, me or... But, no, like, her. you're talking about a man. So, yes, a man wants someone to be submissive. Yes, a man wants to take care of home and for the, you know, his woman to, to you know, all that. 
But a boy does not. A boy is who essentially likes the drama and the toxic and the back and forth and all of that chaotic That's actually shit. a really good point. Like, like uh, you're, you're, I think I would tend to, I think, yeah. No, but men are the, men are the they're two different way. things. Two, two different things. Men He's are not the a same man way. Yet. That's why we, in movies we always see, we always see um, the portrayal of when the, the the wife's at home and she's calling her husband at work. Oh, babe, what are you going to come home? He's not he's a like, man. I have, I have dinner made for you. And then the guy no, goes No, we and don't cheats. see that in movies at all. What we see in movies and what we see in media is Homer Simpson and men are portrayed as bumbling fucking idiots that for some reason are uh, just happen to gallivant through life working at a nuclear power plant eating donuts, right? Why everybody ignores how incompetent they are. And if only, if only... It weren't for that beautiful wife who is somehow skinny and petite, married to this big fat bald guy, wasn't there to correct his endless bad behavior, why men just couldn't get along. It's like, give me a break with this shit. Men are portrayed in the worst light possible. Let me give you an example. There was a show when I was growing up called Home Improvement, right, where the entire theme of of the show was that uh, the guy was an incompetent moron who couldn't even handle the power to- tools on his own show, and his wife had to run the entire family dynamic. In fact, I can give you show after show after show where this is the case. Get, tell me the show where the woman is the nice, petite, 1950s-style housewife who greets him at the door with dinner and modernity. She, go, tell me. Tell me what that show is called. Also, I don't think Hollywood... No, hang on. Let her, let her answer. Tell me what the show is called. What is it called? I don't know. Yeah, it's called it's called you just made it the fuck up. That's what it's I called. I did it though. Anyway, yeah, they did it. Yeah, they they did it in the 1950s the with with the with the cleavers from Leave It to Beaver maybe, but they don't do it in modernity. Hmm. Men don't really know the psychology of themselves. What? Like they don't understand themselves. What book what stupid book did you read? That's just how men are. What's the stupid book you read? No, it's not a book. That's just You how said men it was are. a book. It was like men love bitchy women or something. It's it's titled Why Women Why Men Love Bitches. Who wrote it? I don't know. A woman? Probably. <laughs> yeah, men. I'm, I'm women understand out, the you know. psyche of men better than men understand the psyche of themselves. Wait, women understand the psyche of men better than men understand this? You it's mean, by a woman. It is by named a woman. Sherry Argoy. Right? Of course. It's made it, not by a woman. Oh. Sherry, twice divorced, by the way. <laughs> twice divorced, <laughs> Sherry, right? She knows. She knows what women want, doesn't she? <laughs> Let me, I, I want to ask the panel. Do you guys think that men want bitchy women? No. No. Anybody here think men prefer bitchy women over They only nice prefer women? bitchy women because they can't get women. <laughs> uh... Like, if you think about it, like, those boys who are like, oh, like, I don't want a girl who listens, blah, 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 like, like, I'll bow down to this girl, blah, 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 it's because they can't get women, and once they get a woman, they're gonna do everything they can to keep her. But a man, if he has so many options, why would he... Tolerate. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good point. I mean, uh, there are men out there who, like, can't get anything else, so they're gonna... Either they don't know what else is out there, they think that's normal, or they just don't have any other options, so they're just going to tolerate. Men will put up a, with a lot for some pussy. Like, they will they'll put up with a lot if they don't get pussy. If they get pussy, they're, they're going to put up with very little, and then you're going to be gone or they're just gonna keep you around for sex and then you'll never get a commitment from him. But if you fuck up and you know you start uh, whinging or whatever the fuck, he's like, yeah, I'm not gonna date the, take this girl seriously. Um, anyways, where were we? I forgot. We were talking about uh, who should pay on the first date. Oh yeah, you guys hate the bow for some reason, but you want a guy to pay for the first date. It's like kind of confusing. We have two, three chats we're gonna read. Uh, Sina, go for it. The reason why the women say I don't know when they are asked who paid on the date is because they just show up and they never even notice that there is a bill. Female privilege. (laughs) 
Female privilege. Yo, Lol Paladins, thank you for the uh, message, man. Really appreciate it. We do have, let's see, that. what the heck? Okay, um, sure. Read this one. Ask the panel if China declared war under the moral authority of dismantling whiteness and decolonization directives. Would you side with China or would you stand with the United States of America? That's a wild question, but fuck it, we'll do it. Um, wildly awesome. It's a wildly awesome question. So would you side with China or would you stand with the United States of America? If starting with you, I don't do politics. You got to pick one though. No. Okay. Um, what was the full question? Cause there was like, I mean, it's not just, would you side with China or United States? Yeah, here, I'll pull that? it back up again and I'll have you read it for us. Go ahead. Ask the panel of China declared war under the moral authority of dismantling whiteness and decolonization directives. Would you side with China or would you side with the United States of America? Okay. Um, China or the United States? Can you reword it? I wanted to read it one more time. Okay, China like, like, declares war, and the re the pretext, the justification for the war, <laughs> is they're dis they want to dismantle whiteness, and they want to. They think America is a colonizer, and for this reason. They're declaring war, China, declaring war against the United States. Do you stand with China or do you stand with the United States? Okay, then I would stand with the United States. United States. United States. U.S. Oh, um, would it be okay if I just don't answer this one? Are you like, you don't want to like offend the CCP or? <laughs> I just don't really like to talk about like political stances. Oh, uh, I mean, I can't force you to answer the question, so, uh, okay. I don't think I'm that informed on this topic specifically. Well, there's nothing to be, it's a hypothetical, there's nothing to be informed about. I mean, I guess the U.S. Sweet. Okay, I have a serious question. Um, I'm sorry, I have a serious question. What is whiteness? <laughs> like, well, honestly. In the, from the progressive standpoint? <laughs> Or the actual standpoint, like, like what, what is what is the question asking? Like, yeah. So the question is asking from a progressive standpoint. Uh, whiteness would be the idea that uh, white men and women are privileged over every other class, and the reason that they are is because uh, throughout history, uh, inside of the United States, everything has been favorable towards them, and so they have a leg up over all other ethnicities that they wouldn't ordinarily have if it wasn't due to colonialism and uh, essentially white power. Oh, I would stand with China. The U.S. Well, for all of you who answered that uh, and said that you would stand with the U.S., welcome to conservatism. Glad to see you over here. Based. All right, we have Lucas. Uh, Sina, can you read it? Bit late here, but curious what language we'd be speaking today if the unbased... Unabashed. unabashed. Go ahead. Solipsism. Solipsism. <laughs> <laughs> Exhibited by Cherry Seven during her combo with Rachel. Pervaded those 17 to 23 boys. I'll pull it back up. On June 6, 1944, as they prepared... Wait, what? <laughs> are, are you talking about the U.S.? Wait, on June 6th? Is that... Wait, June 6th, that was uh, D-Day? I think that was... Wasn't that the preparation for D-Day? That was D-Day, right? I mean, but like, what language we wouldn't... Even it... Honestly, Andrew. I don't know. This is a dating podcast. It's not historical. I, even if America didn't actually do a land invasion of Europe... Ru Oh, we would be speaking. Wait, hold on. We wouldn't be speaking German oh, yeah, because the idea Russia. There was, is you would be speaking German, but well, no. To your point, yeah, to your point, likely no. You still wouldn't. Be. We still wouldn't, but, even if yeah, America. Wouldn't. Yeah, I mean, Russia was gonna. Yeah, so um, it is an interesting question, though. I mean, would we per maybe speaking Russian? Like if if because uh, with 
America's help and intervention, we prevented, like Russia would have just, look, I don't know, wouldn't Russia have just taken? Mm, no, well, no, no, I mean, nothing would have happened, right? Like you can't, you can't externally invade the United States and win. It's not pot. The whole world could do it. No, like, but, the whole world can land on the beaches of New York and invade and they wouldn't have a chance. No, I'm not saying <laughs> that, but Russia would have taken more territory in Europe. Yes, that's correct. But to, uh, I mean, but at that point, Russia was part of the Allied powers. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what Europe would it be. Europe would be speaking Russian. Europe like would it would be very different. Okay, we have Lucas here uh, with a follow up. Go ahead, Sina. <laughs> to the storm the beaches of normality duty obligation responsibility accountability etc is non-existent in gen z women truly the apotheosis apotheosis Did of I the feminine right? <laughs> female <laughs> yeah you got it oh hold on pull it back up narcissism combined with the Malays, malaise, malaise of luxury. I, I didn't even say her. <laughs> Damn, bro, he's just throwing out those crazy words just to trip you up, Cena. <laughs> he's just throwing it out to trip you up. Yo, Lucas, thank you for the uh, chats, man. Really appreciate it. Let's get into the questionnaire, then, shall we? Actually, before we get to the question questionnaire uh, for you, earlier on in the conversation, I heard you say you you mentioned I forgot the context. You mentioned women's rights and reproductive rights. Do you recall what the context was? For, I wrote those down, but what was the context? Um, it was just that um, what I look for in a man, and I said that what he needs to be aligned at least politically with me. He needs to be aligned politically with you. He needs to be supportive yes. of women's rights and reproductive rights. When you um, just for clarification for any of the men out there who might be interested in dating you, uh, or just for the sake of the conversation, when you say supportive of women's rights, uh, what do you what do you mean by that? Women's right to education, women's rights to um, an abortion, mm -hmm. um, uh, women's rights to be equal with men, women's right to have a career, etc. Sure. But so are you saying that women don't have those things currently? They do. I'm just saying from your stand, you know, there's men who want that submissive woman and that mm. they want that woman that wants to be a stay at home wife. And okay. I don't want that. And that's what I want him to align with. I see. Okay, so you're not arguing that women don't have these rights. No. But there needs to be a continuity of support of existing rights. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, hmm. uh, I guess on that, going getting into the questionnaire for the whole panel, uh, I know some of you probably answered in the negative on this, but uh, do you guys think that when it comes to women's rights, are there any right, like do women have equal rights to men? Show of hands. Do women have equal rights? Okay, let me reframe the question then. Uh, we do have equal rights. Are there any rights that a man has that a woman does not? Starting with you, I guess. Um, not that I can think of at the top of my head. Uh, okay. Um, going around the table then? No. no. Um, I'm assuming this is like going towards abortion. So I'd say if abortion was illegal, then that would be one right that a man has over a woman is that a woman doesn't get full say in health care. Well, I mean, men don't have any reproductive rights at all. So it's not wouldn't wouldn't equality between men and women be to um, have a national abortion ban? Would that not be equality? I'm not sure. What do you mean? I'm just not sure. Well, if men don't have any rights when it comes to their reproduction, wouldn't that entail that in order for there to be equality, women wouldn't be allowed to have any rights when it comes to their reproduction? Ergo, there would be uh, no right to an abortion. Would that not be equality then? Um, sure. OK, so then you're in favor of equality? on yeah. this topic yeah okay so you're in favor of walking back abortion rights for women then no so you're in favor of inequality between men and women in favor of yeah, women having more rights like i just think a woman should be able to decide and that's just my stance 
Yeah, but that just just to be clear, you're in favor of an inequality of rights between men and women, something that favors more rights to women than to men. Yeah, I guess. Okay, sure. A lot of women have that position. Um, going around the table. Um, I don't think there are any rights that men have more than women. Okay. Are we talking strictly legally or also privilege, like day-to-day -day base? I'm talking like rights, but we could also have a separate conversation about, I guess, privileges. If we are talking from a legal standpoint, I don't think there's much nowadays in equality as far as that goes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I feel like I have to think about this question a little bit more. You mean, I mean, you've had a minute while we've gone around the table. Yeah, then I just prefer not to answer the question. I mean, it's like, I've given you quite a bit of leeway already on refusing to answer. I mean, you've written no opinion on a lot of these things. I feel like you do have opinions. You're just kind of being like intellect, uh, it's like intellectual cowardice. You just don't feel comfortable stating your actual opinion is that fair to say it's not intellectual cowardice i just don't really want to publicize my views so you do have an opinion you're just scared to share it i'll accept that but i mean at least a concession that you're not willing to state your opinion i would just like a little bit of privacy if that's available to me i suppose it I, excuse me i suppose it's just you've come on a podcast to talk so it's kind of counterintuitive but um, what about you? What was the question? Uh, it's, it's definitely a nuanced question. I think that, yes, on paper, women have equal rights to men. But? Um, but, you know, if you're in a country where, yes, like if we're talking about abortion, you know, your child has an um, a extreme deformity, they won't make it out of the womb alive, and you're forced to carry this pregnancy, and it kills you in the end, the man did have more right in this and say in this situation. Well, how, wait, how wait so? a second. How so? Wait, wait, wait. Well, then not only that, but any time the abortion argument comes up, the argument is never between the life of the child and the mother for like an atopic pregnancy or something like that. That's already been relinquished. It's always the default that if it's going to be that the baby actually has the chance of killing the mother from some sort of delivery at that point, uh, everybody agrees, religious and non, that you would default for the life of the mother at that point, and there's good reasons behind that. So, like, but that's that's not really what's ever entailed in the abortion question. Almost no abortion ever happens because of those reasons. Almost zero of them. There have been multiple, multiple cases in red states where a mom has identified that her child has an abnormality that it won't live out of the fetus, and it's a danger to herself to deliver this child, and she wasn't allowed the access to abortion. That's never happened. You can literally where, look it up. Yeah, I'm, I'll literally look it up right now. Tell me where. There was recently a 16-year-old, like, it was on the operating table. She died because it was a risk to her life, and this child could not be aborted where? earlier on. I'm not sure where. I read up on the case. It was a while ago. I don't remember all the details. Yeah, no, that doesn't happen. If it, this is, and by the way, this is a matter of law. They're supposed to default to the life of the mother in the case of entopic pregnancy where there's a deformity which could kill the mother. They always will do the procedure to save the mother's life. So I, I don't, I, literally, that just sounds like propaganda. So to be as maximum charitable, 16 year old on operating, operating table can't have abortion and it kills her, right? Yes. Okay, and it kills her. Let's see. Do you know where this happened? I, I don't know, I don't remember. I know it's an, in a red state where I mean, so Andrew, even granting that this happened, I still don't think that this is actually evidence of uh, some sort of, because when we're talking about uh, rights and a comparison of rights between men and women, equal rights, equal rights would indicate that there's a comparison b being made. Hey, so between... here I found, the, I found the case, okay? At, at least this is the only case I can find, uh, but this was happening due to a miscarriage and they were suing because of a uh the miscarriage should have been sped up 
in order to deliver the fetus. Exactly. At that point, DNC. Uh, hang on. At that point, that was safer, though. The doctors say it was safer to deliver the fetus. They were unaware uh, of any pre-existing condition that would have, have affected the health of the mother. So she was miscarrying, and they're being sued for malpractice because they didn't do the correct things they were supposed to do. But that really doesn't make your case. But this case is happening more. Literally in Texas, they're not teaching certain chapters of the OBGYN residency to their residents because it's not in align with their views, and they have to fly out to different states. Like st uh, chapters on abortion, give, um, chapters on um, performing abortions. Andrew, let's just grant it, yeah, though. But for what, though? <laughs> like, but for what instances? The instances, if you cannot physically deliver this child and it's a detriment to you, then you there have is to... No, no, there is not any... No, nobody is te refusing to teach OBGYNs in Texas that if the health of the mother and the welfare of the mother is at stake, meaning she's going to die if she goes into delivery for this kid, that they can't do an emergency abortion. That is completely nonsense. I would love to know. You can even send it to me after the show. But there's no way that that's true. There's no, simply no way that that's true. But are or are they not omitting education? Yeah, well, I mean, it depends, on what the, it depends on what the education is for. Like, okay, public schools probably omit education for how to build a nuclear bomb. Yeah, so what? Like, good, they should omit that education. So you, need, you would need to tell me what the education is they're omitting and how it would be pertinent to this idea. I'm One sec. Or go ahead, go ahead. I'm saying it's pertinent because you should teach everything. I don't know. I know you're asking me to say specific examples, but if you are in any state in the should U.S. Did you teach kids how to build Uzis? No, because I'm talking oh, no. about OBGYN. <laughs> so we shouldn't teach everything. I'm talking about... <laughs> I'm talking about the OBGYN residency specifically for medical students because that's pretty much the situation. Yeah, why should we teach them everything? If there's a moral dilemma, like would you teach a doctor how to poison patients? No, right? So there's all sorts of things that you wouldn't teach people who are in a residency if there's a moral dilemma. So the, the question is, is like, absent whatever the specific education you're talking about in regards to abortion, if it's outside the scope of the moral dilemma, why would you teach it to them? It's not outside the scope of the moral dilemma, though. Then what is it? I'm saying they should have full access to know everything. Whether or not they can perform why? it, that is up to each state. Yeah, why? You don't know? You don't I... know why they should have access to all that? You can't tell me what it is they're not being educated in? You can't tell me what state it's in? You can't tell me any of these specific cases? But you're adamant that it's happening. That doesn't sound like complete fake news to you? you can like literally possibly look it up, Democrat right? propagandizing? You can look it up. I just looked it up. I couldn't find the case anywhere. The well, only case that I could find was in this miscarriage. I couldn't find any case of the mother's actual, uh, you know, body uh, going to die based on a previous diagnosis of, a, of, an, of an abnormality. That's complete nonsense. And by the way, the reason Democrats lost the most recent election is because there was women all over the place saying shit like this. And when people would look it up, they found out it was bullshit. It was total bullshit. When we get down to it, the real moral dilemma of abortion does not come down to 000.1% of them, which happens uh, when it affects the life of the mother. Almost no abortion is done that way. Can you at least agree with that? Almost zero abortion done in the United States has anything to do with the life of the mother. Okay, but what about if, the, if it was a 10-year-old and then you're not... You know, you're not agreeing with the life of the mother. It, it's yeah, not, it's yeah, not that's, detrimental. Well, that's true, and I'll, I'll directly contend with this. Okay, then we can if, agree. If you that. were essayed at a party, sexually assaulted at a party, does that mean that you can go home and kill another one of your kids? Sorry, what's the question again? If you were essayed at a party and you had two children, could you go home and then kill one of them because you were essayed? Did you or did you not consent to that? Can you answer my question before you ask me that one? child? I'll answer yours, but answer mine. So to start with, if you are essayed at a party, does it give you the right to go home and unalive one of your kids? No. Why? Because that's the life you're taking. That that's exists. right. And so that's the exact counter argument to the argument of you being essayed and delivering. You don't have a right to then take the life of somebody else, even though a horrible thing happened to you. But you're forced to carry through with it. You're not forcing them to do anything. You're saying that they're not allowed to kill somebody else who's external to them. 
But you're forcing the woman to go through, yes. might I say, a that's traumatic true. We pregnancy. Force people all the time to not murder people. That's true. Okay. Well, can we can we please move on to another? Why topic? does I, it make you uncomfortable that there's a counter argument here? I I mean I, I we're having a reasonable conversation. You I know, think I so. I would say that yes, I would do need to do more research on the topic. That's all I'm okay. gonna say. All right. Uh, so I mean, even granting all that stuff, I'm you wrote here that uh, women. You disagree that women have equal rights to men. You also disagree that there is no right a man has that a woman does not. Uh, is there anything? I mean, you brought up the abortion thing. I don't really think that's compelling. Is there any other right? No. So just that one? I mean, that is a pretty major one, but yes. Right, but so, I mean, considering that men don't have any reproductive rights, it's not clear to me if this is like an inequality between men and women. Does that make sense? I mean, it takes two people to make a child, so they both should have an equal... Say? So if a man wants a woman to have an abortion, but she wants to keep the child, he should be able to force her to have an abortion? No. Oh, so he doesn't have a choice then? I don't know why you're throwing these situations at me right now. What, I mean, this is a pretty frequent situation that occurs. I mean... Obviously, men can't compel women to get abortions, but for example, like, a guy could be on the hook for 18 years of his life of child support if he, you know, didn't want to have a kid and she lies about being on birth control, it was a casual encounter, she keeps the kid. I mean, these situations do... I'm not in favor of men being, I don't think men should be able to force women to get abortions, but like, I'm just a bit confused there. I mean, in that case, no, it's not fair to the man. Yeah, right, but that's why it has to be their body, our choice. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. But again, like, I just, when it comes to this abortion thing, men don't have a right, any reproductive rights. So you saying, uh, that you disagree that uh, women have equal rights to men. There is no right a man has that a woman does not. It doesn't occur to me that they're, like, as it currently stands, absent either men being able to compel a female sexual partner to get an abortion or just an outright abortion ban, there, there is an inequality between men and women, and this inequality is to the... I suppose, well, it depends on your side of the aisle, seems to be a right that women possess that men don't. In terms of? Okay, you will, you will agree? To, okay, so Roe v. Wade pushed it back to the states. So there are states where women can still get abortions, correct? Yes. Okay, there, is there any state where a man has any reproductive rights? No. Okay, so in order to create equality between men and women you have states where women have a right correct like for example you have a right to get an abortion in california yes what corresponding right do men have in california pertaining to this topic so you would have to concede then that women have a right that men don't correct on i guess yeah on your terms. right because men can't get there there is no uh, I mean, in your case, are can are men forced to go through that pregnancy? Are they forced to carry the child? Are they then forced nope. to make a choice whether to adopt or then raise this child for the next eighteen years? So you can't really say that we're equal on that standpoint. No, there is sure there's not. there's biological differences, but when it comes to rights, what right does the man have in this situation that the woman doesn't? The woman has the right to abortion. The man has a right to. Nothing? A vasectomy. On, on the paper, on paper, <laughs> yes, what you're saying is right. I'm saying this is much more of a nuanced take than you're putting it out to be. It's very black and white how you're saying it right now. I, what is the nuance? I'm failing to see the nuance. That women have, they reproductively, we have a uterus that we're forced to carry this child. If, yes, it's in terms of rape, Well, you're rape, not always essay. forced to... Okay, I'll, I'll give you that. But if it's rape, essay, you're too young, then you're forced to carry the, out this pregnancy and then decide if you want what, to keep it or I not. Mean, and men can just walk away. I mean, hold on. In California? In any state. I mean, You know what? what? I agreed. Let's just make the concession for the sake of argument that if you're essayed, underage, 
or acid at all, or you have an atopic pregnancy where it would affect your life, in those instances only, we will go ahead and grant that you can go ahead and have an abortion. You're saying, do but I agree you with that still or not? want abortion absent those things, right? Yes. So this you is only my are arguing opinion. those things as the outliers because, because you're demanding, based on those outliers, that everybody has the right to abort anyway. So we'll just grant it for the sake of argument. What could your argument possibly be then? That there is, there's no, ban, or like, uh, there's no um, rights infringing upon abortion? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm just saying that even if Brian were to grant for you, okay, under cases of SA, and if the mother's life is at risk, you can have an abortion, but all other abortions are outlawed. Why is that problematic? It's because I believe in the woman's choice. That's, right. that's it. Yes. That's it. Follow-up question on that. Um, would you rather have a democracy or access to abortions? I don't have an answer for that one. I, you got to pick. You have to pick one. I don't know. I would need more detail. Can you give me more detail? The democracy. Yeah, the democracy is gone, and you can have abortions, or you can have abortions, or you can't have abortions, but you have democracy. I think you can have abortions. I don't know. Well, Andrew, would this be like a fair scenario? So you can still have an abortions, but you have like a... Uh, you have a, a, a Trump monarchy, and then like Trump becomes like God King, and then all his, like his firstborn son then becomes president, and then like it's just, uh, what's the progen, what's that term for? Monarchy? No, it'd be, but, but there's a specific term for like progenit, progenitor, progenitor? I don't fucking know. Okay, whatever. Okay, Which one? It goes from father saying. to son. Goes from father to son. Okay. So it's like I Trump mean, for Obviously, ever. I wouldn't want that, so... You don't I like Baron? You're not like a Baron, so. Stan? A Karen? Baron. Baron. Trump. No, Baron Trump. Trump. no, no, no. Okay. What do you pick? Same as her. So what is your answer? Um... Okay, do you pick democracy or do you pick... Democracy. Abortion. Democracy. Okay, all right. Whatever they got in Canada. I don't know what they have in Canada. Annex Canada. I think I'm a little lost on the question, but I think I'd pick democracy. Okay, pause. Democracy or abortions? Um, democracy. Okay, Chloe? Probably abortions. Okay, why? You, I you just... You're like a anarchist? I feel like... You're like, fuck democracy? The democracy we have anyway is like hardly even so what, what do you mean by that i don't have the u.s for me has not painted a good picture of what democracy is um so given that i don't like this democracy that we're in not that i'm like Why? not if if kamala had just won would you would your, your answer be different no oh, okay you'd still be like fuck the i democracy. just don't like the u.s wait what you just prefer the South Korean democracy? I just don't like the U.S. Why? I never have. Why? I've lived abroad before. and Why, it's Why don't just... you like the U.S.? The people here and the culture here and the but government South, but here. South Korea is an American port. I mean, they literally imported all of the values of America. They have the same democracy. They have the same types of constitutional rights. Like... It's basically an American port. It's a lot more conservative, though. The cultural, it, the culture is different, though. It's very different. Yes. Yeah. Um, what about America do you dislike? I just don't like, in all in all, the way the government does things like what? here. The police forces. What about the Not police? Not that I don't like the police i have plenty of friends who are policemen and police women you think we should defund the police not defund oh, it's just what? like better training needs to happen okay what are your objections though when it comes to the police just they're uh, not trained well systematic that... racism systematic racism um, okay. oh yeah I've that's seen not more... a problem with south korean police at all <laughs> that's like they're like known for it <laughs> Just like Japanese police are known for, literally known for, it's one of the most common things 
that Asian police forces are known for as being the most racist on planet Earth. And when I see that with my own eyes, then I'll have a different opinion on that. But I have seen countless of my friends shot by police officers. You've seen, wait, you know, hold on. Do you know Johnny Smalley? No, you haven't. You're full of it. You haven't seen countless of your friends shot by cops. You've, you've seen, you've seen with yes. your own eyes, you've been hanged, like, what do you mean seen? I have seen a couple of my friends get shot with my own no, eyes. You and then I've seen, I've no, heard you plenty seen of my that. friends okay. who Okay, okay I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. I've got a $500 right now. If you could give the scenario of where you can prove that you were, you were somewhere where you physically watched your friend get shot by cops, Brian pulls it up, I'll give you $500 right now. Why would there be a video of it? Well, you know, it's pretty high profile when somebody gets shot by the police. Not in right? the area that some people live in. Yeah, you not... know, even in predominantly black areas, it's still actually rare that black men get shot by police. Very rare. They have body cams to the police. So. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those. Wait, so you were revealed. hanging out, like when you say you've seen, because some people might use the word seen, like I knew somebody and they were shot, but I didn't see it. You saw it with your own eyes. You were there with them. I have seen probably two people with my own eyes. Get but shot But then by I police. have seen in passing, as in like <laughs> heard from everyone, seen it. So you've seen. No, you haven't. You've seen. You haven't seen anybody get shot. What? <laughs> at least two. Not just one. You had to go with the two. So now it's like there's one really rare event that almost nobody ever witnesses. You just happened to see it twice. Bro, with your own eyes, it's like just stop. Are just, you you're, it's, Listen, you're embarrassing yourself. Literally, it you're might be rare yourself. for you. Uh, where, where did where are you it's from? It's rare for everybody. Uh, the the mean streets of Santa Monica. Jennings, Missouri. Jennings, Missouri. I'm not familiar with Jennings, Missouri. Wait, but so um, you and are you counting Taser or are you saying uh? No, like shot at. Yes. With, shot at. Shot at. Were they hit? One of them was. Shot at. Yes. With a gun? Yes. Huh. I don't know how it goes. Maybe Missouri. I don't know. Missouri's kind of crazy. Not going to lie. Maybe it's true, Andrew. It is Missouri, after all. You were there? Did you get shot, too? No. You didn't get shot? No. Was it the man who got shot? The man? What do you was mean? It, were you with a man or a woman? Who, was, who got shot? A man? I was in a group of friends, and one of the guys got shot. Was he white or black? Black. Or Asian? Or Latino? Black. Or Polynesian? Or indigenous? Or None Native of American? Those extra ones. He was black? Yes. And, but you said two shootings. Was the other guy also black? Yes. This was the same very day? Racist. This is no. a very racist. Oh. Um, okay. Did they make it? Are they okay? Or? Uh, one of them had to get treated. Like I said, one of them actually got hit. But one of them was not hit, but they were shot at. Were they? Did he run away, or what happened? The other guy who made it, who didn't get shot, but got shot. The at. guy who got shot at. Yeah, is he okay? It wasn't. I don't think that one was meant to hit them. It was like a warning shot. I don't know what I'd call it, to be honest. Are you sure it was a police officer and not like gang banging? No, I'm very sure it was a police officer, outfit police officer. What, what was the crime that the two men were like accused of or alleged to have committed? Because usually cops don't like just start blasting like for no reason. Did they, they did, wait, question, did they have guns on them? No. We were all roughhousing. You were roughhousing? Roughhousing is in like. When this happened? 13. The, the cops were shooting at 13-year-olds. We were 13-ish, yeah. And so the cops drew guns on... Cop, singular. Singular cop. Like a mall cop or like a cop cop? We were we were in this area. There's this like almost abandoned parking lot next to where I lived. Where and we'd all... The, all We'd all hang out there, out. Um, and we just like we all did fighting sports, so we would legitimately be fighting each other. It's like it was like Fight Club, kind of. We even as a child we used to have rock fights, and we just get rocks and That's swing them at each other. Gnarly. Wait, so okay, cop pulls up. He's like pulls out the blicky, and just starts blasting. It's not like they started blasting starts at blasting. them; they shot at them. Shot. Yeah, it wasn't what like... What was the crime they were being accused? Like, what it... And violence? Uh, mind you, can we, can we just point a couple of, uh, of stats out here for Jennings, Missouri? That the entirety of the population of Jennings, Missouri is 12,895 people. It's extremely tiny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. That's, and yeah. do you know if you if you had to take a guess, how many police shootings would you say that there were last year in Jennings, Missouri? I have not lived in Missouri since I was a child, so. Okay, I what year know. did this happen? So I can look up the uh, the stats and how many police shootings. This there were. happened. It wasn't was... reported, and Andrew, it wasn't reported. Yeah. No, if an officer discharges his weapon at somebody, it was reported. It was. It's sure. not. It was a corrupt no. uh, police station. The corrupt cops went out and just started willy nilly discharging Cop. their weapon at, at people and at thirteen year olds. The the they were blasting at the thirteen year olds. <laughs> not the wording I used, but. In like a violent. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. That's just completely ridiculous. Are you sure like they didn't just shut their car door loudly and you guys thought it sounded like gunshots? No, we know what gunshots sounded like. Yeah? Did did you carry back when you were thirteen or I used to go shooting with my family. What so the gun just pull the the, the cop pulls up to a bunch of thirteen year olds in their fight club and just starts blasting was he blasting like was he trying to hit someone specific or he was just like kind of like fuck it if they die they die i'm not them so i wouldn't personally know what was going Wait, through their head what do you mean them i like, say them when i pronouns? refer to anyone like that they, i don't them? know are you talking they them no 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 I, and I, now do am i to assume that this 13 year old went to the hospital at least to the hospital well one of yes. them missed yeah one of them was not actually hit Okay, um, which one was it? Was it the 13-year-old? They got, like, grazed in the arm. It wasn't a serious, serious... So did they go to the hospital? They went to the doctors, yes. Like They the went vet. to the hospital. So the, by law, if there's a shooting of this type, uh, the hospitals have to immediately report it to the police department. And so we would have a record. If you give me the year, I can actually source it and find out if there was any 13-year-olds who were shot that year because things. the hospital reported it to the police that never anything ever happened out of Wait, that. I gotta read this really quick before it falls off. Law Paladin says, bro, chicks are never happy. 80% of infinity, still infinity. You could give them like Chris Hemsworth and it wouldn't be enough <laughs> for any woman. The, for those of you women who said 80%, not acceptable. Although we had some pretty open-minded women here. Um, so do we want to continue with the, the yeah, inquiry? Yeah, I want to continue. I you want, want to know, continue about I, the I inquiry? Like to know this, the, um, the cop shooting inquiry. <laughs> So, yeah, so so this 13-year-old, uh, he was grazed, he went to the hospital, and you're saying that the hospital never reported it to the police department. He went to a doctor. Was he it did a not vet? Go, no. Like one of those... Yeah, like, a doctor would doctors. also have to report a gunshot-related injury to the police by law. You know those, like, shifty places that aren't really legal doctors, but they know how to do some stuff? Like, it's a vet. You, you, you took him to a veterinarian, did you? Yeah, she, she, it was like a vet doctor who, like... You took him to a veterinarian... Like, the, breaking it was like It was like in a casino, right? Like, you get popped, right? Polly gets popped, and you, say, you take him over to the veterinarian, and the veterinarian removes the bullets and sews him up, and then away he goes? Like, it was like that? No, like those people who are operating out of a weird building who don't actually have a license to be doing what they're doing. Some meth heads? I mean, I don't know what they are, but... Those yeah, are I know, I know exactly doctors. what you're talking about. Like I've often doctors. seen unlicensed doctor buildings where you can go in and have bullet holes removed from you, said nobody ever in the history of, uh, well, all of my lifetime anyway. Uh, it's just, by the way, if I'm wrong, quick show of hands, how many of you have ever gone and visited one of these shifty unlicensed doctors whose job is to remove bullet wounds from people. Uh, you anybody? know what? Show I, of hands? Show of hands, anybody? I actually take her word for it. I've been to Jennings, Missouri, and it's... It's rough out there. <laughs> In Jennings, okay? Andrew, let's not diminish... Let's not downplay the mean streets of jennings because you might catch a beef you're you're not you're in michigan andrew you might catch a beef in one of these gangbangers in jennings missouri they they don't fuck around like you're disrespecting uh the the j boys wait uh the jennings boys you the jennings boys the gen not nah, andrew the jennings boys <laughs> like that's the gang that is that the what's the name of the gang from jennings it's the 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 jennings the jennings boys and then also the gen, gen, uh, never mind okay um you know what though maybe maybe you're right i knew a chick once 
she knew a guy who was walking through, or she knew a girl who was walking through a park, and this chick was trained in MMA, and she was attacked by a couple of muggers, and she didn't just break one of their legs, she broke all of their legs. She broke all of these muggers' legs with her bare hands. It's the most impressive thing I'd ever heard of. I remember that story. I was the the breaking leg story. That was a good one. Uh, okay, we have Joe Murphy here. BNA, let's cook a roast. Each lady defined feminism from a Western perspective and an Eastern pers that <laughs> That's asking a lot, Joe. Uh, <laughs> ladies, speak up against a master debater. Don't be afraid to open up your world views. Uh, how about this? Because I don't know. If, I mean, Western perspective, Eastern perspective. I don't know how productive that'll be. Uh, how about just going around the table? Do you consider yourself a feminist? Starting with you. Yes. Okay. No, I'm not sure. I would need to look into. Do we do we want to give them a definition on this one? Just uh, here's. I think this is Andrew's definition. Uh, a movement towards egalitarian with a rejection of patriarchy. Okay, so just equality. Yeah. A movement towards equality, which with, the form of equality we're talking about here is egalitarianism. Um, so that there's no confusion, I use that word specifically because egalitarianism is expressing that men and women are essentially interchangeable widgets. Anything a man can do, a woman should be able to do, and anything a woman can do, a man should be able to do. Feminist, yes, no? I'm still not sure. I'd like to look into that more. Okay. Um, Poss, what about you? I think, yeah. Okay. Um, I don't really know. I think people can just do whatever they want. I don't... Hmm. Uh, like, if someone wants to go, like, how do I word it? Equality, yeah, sure. Should that be a thing? Absolutely. I don't think it 100% is. Um, at the same time, I'm not going to put someone down for wanting to stay more traditional and not be a part of a feministic movement. Are you a feminist? I don't do action supporting one way or another. I just live okay. my life. All right. Uh, what about you? I think I'd also have to think about a little bit more. But could I answer the second part of that? What was it? Like comment thing? It was like talking more about like political views and who's the person? You mean the previous? Or no. Yeah, the previous like comment. It was like, well, there was a question that can't, we didn't go all the way around the table. We kind of started talking about America. I think the question was uh, democracy or abortion. Mm. So I don't think you had a chance to answer on that. I don't that. think she's talking about that. She's talking about that. TV I know, but why don't we oh. just finish up that one then since she reminded me? I don't think I have a comment on that one either. You got to participate, though, to some degree in the show. I, can, I mean, this is the second time you I can participate because I want to talk about the education because... The edu we've already moved off of the... What do you mean, the education well, homeschooling? Ra Brian, Rachel did say that she'd like to take the seat and uh, discuss this very issue with, uh, with the dissenters. Uh, if you'd like to see that, I'm happy to bring her down. Yeah, I want to... We can do that. I just want to get through, get caught up on the chats. Nope, no but, problem. I'm just letting you know. Sure, we can do that. Um, so you had... You wanted to talk about the... What? Like education, like homeschooling versus um, um, public school education? And that, Andrew, that's what Rachel wanted to come talk yeah, about. Yeah, well, that, because that moves into the broader idea, um, as the gal said to, I think from your perspective to your right, she had said, listen, we're talking about optimals and this type of thing. Um, that's because it basically it opens up a kind of broader conversation on mm -hmm. the topic, which is directly related to feminism and the idealism behind it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we can come back to that, but so I guess finishing up, democracy or abortion? Abortion. Okay. I don't know what the question was. Oh, if you, so, okay, uh, I guess if you had to choose, you can have one or the other. You can keep democracy, but you lose rights to abortion, or you can keep rights to abortion, but you lose democracy. Abortion. Tiffany? I don't really care about either, but I would go with democracy. Wait, why don't you care? You you don't care about democracy? You're just curious why? No, not really. Because you're like a nationalist, I, or, or wait, not a nationalist. Uh, <laughs> you're some uh, people's opinions matter more. Like a person who doesn't even know what the difference between a country and a state is shouldn't be having the same weight on their vote for their vote. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Brian, that's, that's how it is in the U.S. So. What about me? 
yeah. on this question? Democracy or abortion? Uh, dem- uh, well, I mean, like, I don't know. Kind of like if we got rid of democracy and then I could just be dictator, that would be kind of cool. So I, I guess, like, I'd be down to be a dictator, like authoritarian or whatever. Me too. So I'm, like, kind of, <laughs> if it's me that gets to become, like, the author- authoritarian dictator. What if it's No, you don't, you don't get to be. Oh, just live yeah. yeah, I don't know. That's a hard one then. Uh, I guess just like keep democracy then. If I had to pick between one or the other, um, I'll move it on just for the sake of time. Uh, I did have one note here. This came up in a previous conversation. We won't linger long. Uh, you spent time in Korea. There's this uh, thing that kind of propped up here recently in the US related to something that's going on in Korea, the 4B movement. Are you familiar with this at all? I stay as far away from politics and anything to okay. do with them as possible. So I'll move on then. Uh, we do have a couple chats coming in. There's quite a few guys. Sorry, I'm trying to get to them as quick as possible. I'm just, uh, we got this one. Tim underscore Stokely underscore himself donated $200. What factors in your view have led to declining birth rates in developed countries? Is this for the whole panel? What factors in your view have led? Man, you're asking some... <laughs> uh this this uh, okay what factors in your view porn porn feminism anybody else want to weigh in why why are the birth there's, weight there's only one there's just one factor it's, it's very simple uh, why anime the priori- pillows it's a prioritization in western nations and in other nations adjacent to western nations that prioritize education during women's reproductive years rather than prioritizing reproduction that's it that's the that's the whole the sum of the entire game that's it all right tim stokely appreciate the tts thank you very much we have one from our good friend lol paladins hail and well met oh god lol paladins it's donated loud. 200 dollars and two cents thank you man just want to point out the obvious craziness of this if a black 13 year old was shot by police it would be national news she didn't see anything she is so full of it that's what happened right yes was it a white police officer yes well, how long ago was it when I was about 13. I'm so like, f- was it before before now. the uh, COVID? It was like 2019? It was before COVID. White officer shoots at 13-year-old black kid who was roughhousing with his friends. Is there a news article we can maybe find on this? Or was it just not, it wasn't reported? Without or? putting out the name of somebody whose family, I'm sure, wants the situation to be respected? No. I mean, if it's already, like, a public... You don't have to share it, but, I mean, if it's already out there in the public, it's already out there in the public, but that's totally fine. We have a couple more chats coming through here. We have... Low Paladins, how dare you support women feeding their children, Andrew? You mis- you disgusting misogynist. They should have total freedom to go work for a corporation while a man stays at home giving them formula purchased with her money. All right. Well, this is this is the idea. It's like, okay, little Johnny, don't worry. Uh, mommy needed to work, so that's why I sent you out with Venezuela, and you have all of these inflammation issues in your body, right? It seems like um, it seems like a very stupid thing to do. Um, and I did. I mean, I made the insistence. Uh, yeah, I, de- I definitely wanted to see my kids at home, and I wanted to make sure that they were breastfed absolutely, so that they mm-hmm. didn't have those types of issues. All right, we have a TTS coming in here. And three more. Tracy on tilt donated two hundred dollars. Thank you, Tracy. Andrew, your wife is a savage. I strive to be as great of a woman that she is, and she is a role model to women like me. It's great to see a woman like her defending our beliefs in this modern world. Yo, Tracy on tilt. Thank you so much for the uh, TTS. I really appreciate yeah, it. Thank Rachel's, you. Rachel's great. She's always been great. Yeah. Uh, so thank you, Tracy on tilt. I, that name's familiar. Did you DM us recently? Uh, but thank you so much. Really appreciate it. We have three chats coming in here. Uh, we have Joe Murphy. He says, Cena, can I have you read the hundreds? Ladies, you can catch a refund on the first couple of 50-50 dates once offering sexual access. A boat... Bow. A bow and ch- children... Co- 
contrary. contrary. Contrary to a popular sexual revolution, you might... You might land a good man for life. Thank you, Joe Murphy. That was beautiful. I agree. You got to hit the bow. Definitely hit the bow on the first. Should we uh, bow? Uh, we'll do the bow video a little later. But, uh, okay, Joe Murphy, he also says, go ahead, Sina. The issue with feminist group think you can't be a rock star mother and have a career. It's impossible. Choose one mission to maximize your ability. If your mission is to be the best mother. That's from Joe Murphy. Thank you for the soup chat, man. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, any disagreements from any of the panelists here? But what's a definition of like the best mother? Because I think my mom works and that made me a better person because I see that she's ambitious and career driven. Mm. Uh, one question on that. Uh, what That would make me feel like shit. Make me feel like she was prioritizing career over me. Well, are your, your parents are still together? Yes. Uh, and both of them work? Yes. And do they, in terms of uh, the income brought to the household, is it about the same? Your dad more, your mom more? Um, my dad makes more. Dad makes more, okay. And she works full time? She does. W and what about when you were young? Do you have siblings? No, I'm an only child. Just you, okay. Yeah. Uh, was she working full time even when you were younger, or what was your um, experience growing up? I think she took off time for like maternity leave, uh, but she was working like majority of my childhood. So prior to having you, she was working full time? Yeah, she was. What's her job? Uh, she works for the school district. Uh, she like a secretary or what is she like a um, counselor or what does she do no she works she like manages um, like a foreign language program okay and she's working full-time yeah okay and how how much time did she take off a year I'm not quite sure you don't how recall she took okay off. yeah all right um, Andrew it sounded like you maybe had something or yeah so I was just saying the I understand there could be circumstances where women need to work for the production of income for a household. There's no doubt about that. Um, and by necessity, I think that good moms, of course, will do that. What I'm saying is that if they don't actually have to work, they don't have to. They're hedging their bets against their own future, thinking that it's possible that there could be a divorce, something like this. They want to fall back on some income or career that they have. Then they're prioritizing themselves over the future of their own children. And I think that that's... Uh, in many ways despicable but i think my mom like i feel like the fact that she had a job not only made me realize that you know i need to be ambitious and want like a great career in the future as well but then she also had the time to take care of me um that's not possible why is that not possible how many hours a week does your mom work um, uh, like it's probably like the standard, like eight to five. Okay. So she works eight to five, which means that she had to outsource your care from at least the hours of eight to five. Right. Okay. But when you say outsource, yes. So my many else besides my, her had to do it between the hours of eight to yes, five. Right? So, okay. So my grandma raised me from those hours that she wasn't home. Why yeah, is that? Why not, is that optimal? Why is why that? Why is that optimal as opposed to your own mother? Because she is a great woman too that influenced my beliefs and why can't that be optimal well, for somebody this. else to was it was it necessary like did she necessarily need to work in I order think... to support you or was it a choice that she made because she wanted the extra income i don't think well she always told me this i don't think she wanted to work because of the extra income because quite frankly we were okay financially but yeah well then why was she prioritizing that over because, you that's weird because work gives you a sense of fulfillment in terms of over you know reaching... raising your own children but she did that's raise weird. me so you want to no, work she didn't. you no, want to no, work she, in the she, future she, so that you can grandma, provide a safe example you said for your, your daughter. grandma raised you i think my mom or my mom worked right and she gave me Seeing her work and also being able to raise me and spend time with me. Didn't, she didn't raise you. <laughs> she outsourced half of your raising to somebody else or more. She did raise me. You're defining okay, raising well, she, as a 100%. Okay, so your grandma at least raised you from the hours of 9 to 5, right? And she was a great influence on me. So I'm that was optimal. She wasn't. Not saying that your grandma wasn't a great influence. Okay. I'm just saying that she outsourced your raising to a person who was not her 
from at least the hours of nine o'clock to five o'clock, right? But you're saying that what is optimal... Can you answer my question before you ask me one? Sorry, could you repeat the question one more time? Yeah, your grandma raised you at least from the hours of nine o'clock in the morning to five o'clock in the evening. Is that correct? Correct. So then somebody beside your mom was actually raising you between at least most of the block of the day. Correct. Okay, correct. So if that is the case, then I don't know what you're disputing with me. What Saying I'm that your grandma's a good person, I'm not disputing that. Grandma's probably awesome. I understand that, but you're saying that out or not outsourcing is optimal. Yes, but, that would have been optimal for you, correct. But I think outsourcing was the optimal way to raise me because why 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 so you're saying that you would prefer to have had less time with your mother during your I'm, formative years? i'm not saying i would have rather had less time but i so also would you have rather had more time with your mother or less time with your mother i was happy the way i grew up because yeah can my, you answer I, my question though can would you rather have less time with your mother in your formative years or more time with your mother in your formative years there's no less or more. I was happy yeah, with but, what I had. So you can't answer my question, right? Because the answer is you'd rather have more time with your mother during your formative years and you know it, right? I No, but I actually liked that my grandma raised me because now I have an established relationship with my grandma that I wouldn't you have had. You would have an established relationship with your grandma anyway. What guarantees that? If she didn't raise your me during those Your grandma wouldn't have come years. and visited you because your mom stayed home with you or what? But I had a deeper connection with my grandma because I spent those Yeah, that's, see, that's the problem, right? Her. That's the bad thing. It's like that deeper connection aspect. When you say I have a deeper connection I, with I grandma. I think you're just taking it than I have Than I have potentially with my own mother, right? So that's the thing that I'm disputing here. It's like I'm not saying that your grandma's not a wonderful person and didn't do everything she could possibly do to raise you. I'm not saying anything like that at all. I'm just pointing out that if a woman is to prioritize outsourcing your care to somebody else, then it sounds like she's not prioritizing you. She's letting somebody else prioritize you because, and I think that that's ultimately fairly selfish. But you can prioritize multiple things. Why do you have to just Yes, you one can, but I think that a good mother prioritizes her children above all things. I, I can see your perspective. I may not necessarily agree with it, but... Yeah, I think that that's fair. Like, listen, I understand that people come from all different walks of life and have all sorts of contributing circumstances to how they were raised. I most certainly did. I had a stay-at-home dad rather than a stay-at-home mom because my father had multiple sclerosis. He couldn't work. So so he stayed at home with me. And that, those are the best years of my life. He was, uh, he was a fantastic father, uh, this type of thing. But always one of my parents was was at home to take care of us and the reason that that was so important uh, rather than outsourcing is because they valued us more than they valued at any external gains so that's that's just my perspective i see your perspective and i can respect it you mentioned that uh because your mom worked she was a figure there in terms of you saw her ambition she i suppose wanted to instill ambition in you, um, you know, since we are talking about dating here, I always found this interesting because uh, women are attracted to men who are ambitious. And then I, I think women tend to think that, well, I'm attracted to this in men, ergo, there's a symmetry there in terms of what men certainly must find attractive in me or in women. Um, do you think that when it comes to finding a partner, uh, your ambition or success or uh, career goals will make you more attractive to men? Oh, for me? Yeah. Um, I don't think I am ambitious for men. I'm just ambitious. That's not what I'm asking, though. You're ambitious for yourself, right? I am. Okay. But to you're saying, money, like, do you think right? it makes me more attractive? Right. In the way that, like, for example, I think that when it, for women, uh, a man who's a doctor, just by simply virtue of him being a doctor, because of the status, because of the money that comes with it, he's going to just be deemed as a more attractive partner to women uh, wholesale. Whereas it's not clear to me if a woman who's a doctor, if that's going to be like a substantial, like that's going to be like make men really attracted to her in the same way that a man who's a doctor is going to be like really attractive to women. Can I... Uh intrude for one second well i'll have her answer but then i'll let okay. you go ahead so go ahead yeah i think me or me being ambitious makes me attractive to men to men how so 
Um, well, I guess it just kind of depends. Like, I feel like I'm generalizing. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like that I'm hardworking and that I have goals. I think that's attractive. I think that's an attractive trait either way. Your goals are uh, related to your career, though, correct? I mean, it can be any type of goals. It can be like health goals. It can be career goals. It can be family goals. Okay. What are your family goals? Um, How many kids do you want? I want two, I think. Okay. Yeah. Do you know when you'd like to get married and have children by? Um, probably like... Do you my, want to get married? I do. Like okay. my late 20s, maybe late 20s, early 30s. Early 30s. Okay. You had something on this? Uh, yeah. So I was thinking that men and what they do doesn't necessarily make us attracted to them. So I don't really think that it applies to us either. What do you mean? Like them having such a high job, but let's say they're horrible people, we won't find them attractive. Them having not such a good job, but still good, but not ask, being sure. good people. Let me ask you a question. You know? Do you know who Chris Brown is? <laughs> yeah, I do. This man has, he's wealthy, very high status. Yes. He also has a history of uh, alleged Abuse, domestic right. violence. Okay. Do you think he has a shortage of women who are attracted to him? I think so. I'm not attracted really? to him. Yeah. Well, just because you're attracted, really? Yes. <laughs> you you realize there are women who pay like thousands of dollars just to take a photograph with him. I'm sure, but I don't think that's all women. Sure, it's not all women, but like you said, well, these men with a lot of status, but they're horrible. Ergo, this precludes them from having romantic or sexual interest from women. As many. It's clear, despite like the like uh, mountains of news reporting. Uh, and look, I, I don't know the full details of the allegations towards Chris Brown. In any case, uh, it, it does seem to be the narrative that he, he did uh, a, attack Rihanna or whatever, um, and perhaps other women. I don't know all the details. Um, so uh, you would say he's a horrible person? No, I would say that career and that that statement that you made is not necessarily based on based on what on men you think so you, think just to be clear your position is women do not find men with status attractive not all no well i'm not saying i'm not making like a totality claim i'm not saying all women are uh -huh. going to prioritize this most will though okay okay i'd sure. say the majority of women are going to find high status men attractive sure i wouldn't say all but I, but virtue. if you say some then i would agree what well what percentage would you attribute this phenomenon to i would say 60 percent. so a majority of women sure but not all okay so that when you apply it to women i that's why i said what I what would be the reverse so like men who are like seeking out high status women right when do they do that they don't exactly oh so you agree with me that's what i'm saying oh yeah. okay all right <laughs> um wait so What's I'm confused. You'd, I was just making a statement on like both sides. Oh, okay. So you're yeah. saying not all women, right? Sure, not all women, of course. Plenty of women date like average men or whatever, right? Um, but uh, this does seem to be a more uh, common phenomenon in women than it is in men. There you go. That's good. Okay. So I I don't know if to technically call it a threesome. Um, was, there it like was, a dude watching I guess, the corner almost crying? there. <laughs> no, he was. Uh, he was there. He was very present. Okay. Was um, he present and crying though? It was no, no. no crying. He okay. was. There was no crying involved at all. It was <laughs> just that it, like, it never fully happened, and then it was. It we ended up just like both of us at the just end. A, just for a second, just to see how it feels. <laughs> okay just as, and so um then it turned out like he didn't feel comfortable going through with it he pulled mm. me to the side and he was like look i know you're stupid drunk right now you might wake up tomorrow and look at me like why did you want to go through because i was like let's i i want it and um he was like so it happened so that the, the girl ended up leaving it just kind of like 
yeah and then we were together at the end and honestly i i'm glad it happened the way it did because i'm pretty sure he was he was gonna be right in the morning i was gonna have like regrets and second thoughts or even back then my mentality is different than it is now so my headspace where it was it was way out of sorts um i would have probably in arguments even if it was like oh where's the remote i would have been like and you also let me let you have a threesome and so i would have been bringing it up in his face probably <laughs> so um yeah so that's why i say i don't know if it fully yeah, I could, counts I could definitely see how that would be his fault yeah yeah you see it's like because i as like a girl i feel like no matter what even if it's like us we're saying like yeah it's okay no it's cool we're always gonna throw it back in in their face in one way or another subconsciously i feel so how dare that guy let you do that thing you wanted yeah like how how did you let me let you do that yeah so yeah (laughs) we're gonna come back to some of the pre-show notes but we do have stifler coming in ask everyone to rate their own looks on a scale of one to ten starting with you go ahead I would say like a five. Five, okay. Sina? I think I'm a five then. What, then. You, what did you rate yourself last show? An eight. Why did you lose three points in 48 hours? 48? Yeah, you were here on Sunday. Do they use a different system in canada what is it they count there's not time clocks they they count the you have a sundial yes ah the sundial okay when the sun they use snow metrics snow so listen so the you were here when the pile of snow was here Uh, and now it's here yeah okay yes uh yeah so uh the the snow Mm. yeah so you were an eight yeah. on Sunday. Yeah. Now you're mid. A five. You're a five. How did that happen? Just personal preference today. Yeah. Did you? Are you? Um, it's the makeup it's today. The makeup. Your it's makeup's the makeup. all Bad fucked makeup up. Yeah. Yeah. You're so right. Mm. Mm. It's all. Um, is it? Do you? Are you gassy? Is that it? Or no. That could lower your point. Can I ask, because it seemed like you changed your answer based on her answer. Like, you kind of compared. (laughs) Um, And so, like, that was her own assessment. So I was just curious why that would change for you based on what Uh, she thought. What do you rate her, then? Because you're like, oh, she rated herself low. I thought she must have been this. So what what would you have rated her, I guess? Well, I would, like, on my scale or her scale? Well, what would you rate her? I would rate her like an eight. Okay. Yeah. So you're like, well, oh, if she's a five, then I must no, be five. No, it's mainly the way that I look today, I guess. What happened? <laughs> the makeup. The makeup. The ma- Oh, okay. Mm. All right. That's cool. All right. Uh, lost three points. And uh, what about you? Five. Like- what What did you rate yourself last time? Six. Why Why the downgrade? Cause she's pretty as hell. <laughs> like what? Okay. By the way, what is that? Is that makeup or? Yeah. It's just drawing. Yeah. But what's the symbol? It's like a. It's a spiral. Spiral. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, what about you? I'm gonna rate myself like no extensions, lashes, all of that. Yeah. So I would say seven, seven w- and a half. Without. Without. And then with. Um, I think when I was younger, I would rate myself higher, but currently, like, maybe only go up to an eight, eight and a half, maybe. Eight and a half with all the stuff. Yeah. And then when you were younger, like your peak or whatever the fuck. Um. Ten? I would say nine. I can't get myself a ten. I would never rate myself perfect. And I had one time a guy told me I was a Vegas ten, but an LA nine. (laughs) A Vegas 10, but an LA 9. Yeah. Okay. What about you? Um, I want to say on a good day of five and a half. All right. What about you? Seven. All right. Six. All right. Seven. I give myself a five. Andrew, what about you? Uh, so uh, since there's more realistic answers today, I'll go with the actual one. Uh, about a four. Yeah, not bad, right? Yeah. All right. And then on this one, though, 
Do you think you'll be better looking in t 10 years time? So you're 23. Do you think you'll be better looking at 33? I hope, but I don't think so, no. Okay. You're 18. Do you think you'll be better looking in 10 years time at 28? Yes. 38? No. Do you think you'll be better looking in 10 years time at 28? Yes. 20 years time at 38? Yes. 30 years time at 48? Maybe not, no. When's the peak? Maybe high 20s. High 20s, yeah. okay. You're 34. Do you think you'll be better looking in 10 years time at 44? No. You're 34. Do you think you were better looking at 24? No. Better looking now. At better looking now at 34 versus uh, 10 years ago at 24. Yes. Didn't you say you were a nine when you were younger? Yeah, but so I would say go not all back? the way back that far. In between 24 and... So like 28? 28. 28, yeah. Okay, so better looking at 28 than you are now at 34. Correct. How about this? Uh, wait. Better looking now at 34 versus 18. Better looking now. And then how about, well, I'll just ask. Uh, better looking at 28 or 18? 28. Okay. Uh, you are 27. Better looking in 10 years time at 37. I, to be quite honest, I, I honestly don't know. I want to say... There's a 50-50 no, 50-50 yes. If I have kids, my body might change. So Let's say I you might, don't have kids. If I don't have kids? Yeah. If I don't have kids, I want to say I'll look decent, decent enough. No, the question is, though, will you be better looking? <sighs> better compared looking. To, like, so you now and then in 10 years oh, time. That's hard. Um, I, God, that's sad. Considering my eating habits and my just habits, I'm gonna say just uh, probably, probably yes, I'll look better. Okay. In, because in a of few the years. eating habits. My eating habits, yeah. Like I'm, I'm changing up. I'm trying to get mm. healthier and like trying to work on myself to look better. Sure, eating habits. Okay, I have a question on that, but uh, and then you're 27. Better looking now at 27, or we're going to go nine years back, uh, or better looking at 18? Oh, God, no, not at 18. Better looking at 27. Better looking now at 27 versus 18, okay. And then going to you, you're 34, better looking in 10 years' time at 44. Um, I hope so. Okay, uh, better looking in 20 years' time at 54. I hope it just gets better. So, so But so you're saying you, you think you'll be better looking... At 54 versus now at 20, uh, 34, excuse me. I think that will depend on what resources are available to me. Such as? All kinds of different cosmetic and athletic skin care. Athletic. Could, yeah. Okay. Like different workouts, dietary. We know so much more about nutrition mm. now than we did okay, 20 diet, years ago. Another diet so. Thing. Okay. So. Um, I think nutrition. And you're right. talking plastic surgery too? Some. Yeah. Okay. So like I would maybe be open to lipo it. or Botox or other I implants. think it would depend on what I'm insecure about okay. at that point. Let's go 30 years forward. Uh, better looking at 64 versus now at 34. Um, again, I think it depends on what I'm willing to do at mm. that point. I, yeah. Bet, I mean, better looking. I, yeah. I think my audience changes, right? So who's, who's the judge? Is it just me or is it generally? Right. Okay. Um, actually, I'm actually kind of confused by that. Right? Why would your audience change? It's like the same amount of 20 year olds as 50 year olds are going to see you now as they do in 10 years, right? Well, no, like I would consider like my judgment now is based on what my peers would consider. And so I, at, at 54, I'm also still going to be taking into consideration the opinion of my peers, which would be other people of the similar age. So mm. why wouldn't you take into account people who were 10 years younger than you? I, I mean, I don't necessarily like at what consider point are they their not judgments. Your peers anyway. Like once you hit 20 or 25, are you just not a peer with somebody anymore because they're 35 or 40? No, I think there's a limit to that. I think life experience can also change whether or not I consider someone a peer. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't know that your audience would change much, right? It seems like it'd be basically the same people or the same, same demographics who would look for the attractiveness measure. 
Maybe a better way to put it is like how we judge attractiveness changes by age. So I personally feel I'm more attractive now. A lot of that has to do with the level of self-confidence that I have. And so I don't think that I had that level of confidence at 24. And I think that as you age, especially as a woman, you gain certain perspectives that only add to your allure as a woman. Can I ask you a question then? Of course. Let's say that a guy had the option between uh, two 24-year-old women and one was a drop dead knockout. She was gorgeous, but she was really shy and bashful and didn't have much confidence. And the other one was really not very good looking at all, but she was a boss babe. Who do you think you would prefer? Um, me personally? You said she's not attractive at all? Like no, what? not you personally. What do you think the guy would prefer? I mean, I think it would depend on the guy, right? Like, what are what are his goals? Just for your this average, thing? most of your average guys, right? Just on average, what do you think? Which one do you think he would prefer? I mean, I think he's gonna go with the prettier one. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, is like, if that's the case, and I would agree with you, right? I think that that's a reasonable assessment to make. Then what the hell does confidence have to do with anything? Like, Wait. if we're asking for the for a physical metric of of beauty, and that's what we're after, so often I hear women say. Well, but I'm a lot more confident now than I used to be when I was prettier. But I don't actually understand that answer because it really doesn't have anything to do with the metric of the question of physical beauty, does it? I think that the confidence piece comes from being comfortable in the position that we don't get dressed up for the boys. We get dressed up for ourselves and for the girls. And yeah, I understand the confidence portion. I get, I get the confidence portion. I understand. What I'm saying, though, is that if we're asking for just a purely beauty standard, just to physical be like... Confidence. Somebody would have to talk to you. They'd have to. They'd have to know you. They'd have, you know. So that would have to come into play. There'd have to be an interpersonal dynamic. But what about just somebody looking at you? I feel they, like I can gonna... determine whether a person is confident or not by looking at them. What? Not How do you always. That? I don't think not always. all. Not always. But if you are observing a person, looking for whether or not they are confident, you can tell by their body language. No, no. Yeah. I mean, you get three seconds. You're walking down the street, right? The guy's walking past you. He's got two seconds. He just takes a look, right? Oh, she's good looking, or she's not. They're like, they're not like, they don't got, you know. He makes uh, eye contact. Huge goggles, contact. and they're like, they're looking through their magnifying glass <laughs> at you for and observing you for multiple minutes, right? They're just like walking past you. They're not going to know what your confidence level is there. Maybe. I maybe think it's pretty like, easy to determine if they make eye contact. They're confident. If they're not looking at you and they kind of avert immediately, then they're kind of shy. That's yeah, a pretty easy can, indicator like there, for there me. There can be women who walk with a certain gait, let's say. They walk with like a certain way that they that they do it, uh, where you could think they're very confident, and then you talk to them, and they're totally not. They're like, mm -hmm. you know, and they're kind of sheepish and this type of thing. It all, it all, I, I, don't, I don't even know if we could judge confidence just at a look. Uh, but even if you could, even if I were to grant that, there's some cases where you can judge if somebody's confident or not confident in some cases. Just if we're looking at it on average, I think that most people can determine physical beauty in another person at a glance. Like, it doesn't take much. Just look over, that's all you need, right, to know if they, you think they're attractive or not attractive. So if you're just going off that purely physical metric, uh, when we ask, you know, between 1 and 10, that's really what we're looking for. It's like, in 10 years, at a glance, is the average guy, when he looks over, going to think that you're better looking at this point in your life or at that one? I understand. We're gonna we're gonna get the rest of the answers from uh, everybody. Uh, you are 27, better looking in. Or wait, hold on. I don't. Did I get all the? No, I don't think I finished here. Hold on. Uh, you said better looking at 64. 30 years. Then 34. Yeah. Depending on what procedures I might have, yeah. Um. Okay, and. Uh, what about 40 years time at uh probably 74. cap at that point okay and when would uh I think when's peak the peak peak will be between 34 and 44 34 and 44 okay so you have not hit your peak yet correct okay and then going back 10 years time were you better looking at 24 than you are now at 34 no and then were you better looking at 18 than you are now at 34 no okay going to uh you you're 27, better looking in 10 years' time at 37? No. Okay, and then you're 27, were you better looking at 18 than you are now at 27? No. Uh, okay, do you think you're currently at your physical peak? 
I would say maybe like 24. So three years ago. Okay. And then you're 27, better looking in 10 years time at 37? Uh, no, I believe that I've already hit my peak probably around four or five years ago. So 22, 23? Yeah. Okay. I don't think anybody sure. reaches their peak after the age of 30, in my opinion. Okay. <laughs> fair, fair, fair. Um, How old are you again? 27. You'll think differently later. I mean... I what do you mean? What do you mean she'll think different, differently? I think, like, as in terms of she'll cope? No, I just think as you get older, especially as a woman, and you look back and reflect on your looks later, you that drastically changes. That's why I can say now that, like, I peaked at 28 because I can look back and say, like, oh, sorry, that like I made a lot of changes in my appearance as far as like even just little things as things I would do with my hair or my makeup that make me look a lot better that I learned over mm. years. When you're really young, you're kind of just doing whatever, trying to figure it out, different hair color, different haircut. Like, so I just think- yeah, I think that's reasonable to say if you're talking about a four year stretch, like 24 to 28. Okay, Correct. yeah, that's yeah. fine. But I think it becomes cope when you're 32, 33, and you're like, no, nope, when I was 24, I was I'm way better looking now. What we're asking for is like, you're just seeing a picture of a person, right? That's it. You're looking at their 24-year-old picture, and you're looking at the 34-year-old picture. What do you think the average person would find more attractive? The 34-year-old version of you or the 24-year-old version of you? The average person? Yeah. I think 34-year-old me. Okay. Erroneous! Erroneous! <laughs> um, wait, but so... How about this? All I wouldn't say that... Sorry. I, I oh, wouldn't say that now about me at 28 or 29. I think I was far better looking at 28 and 29 than I am now. And I also think I was far better looking at 28 and 29 than I was at 18 or 19. Uh -huh. So uh, that's why I'm saying like... And I like peak for me varies on the woman. Your everybody's peak is different um, for your physical appearance, in my opinion. But well, what if we adjusted for this, let me ask you this question: Have you had any sort of cosmetic enhancements? Absolutely. Since? Yeah, yeah. So let's pretend that you're 19 years old and had the same cosmetic enhancements you have right now, and now we're looking at the same picture of you at 34 versus 1920. Same cosmetic enhancements. Which ones? Which one's prettier? Definitely when I was younger, 24. Yeah. So then the basic idea here is that you're using cosmetic enhancements in order to enhance a youthful standard for beauty. That's what's going on. And if you had those same cosmetic enhancements when you were younger, you'd be prettier younger, right? Yes. Yeah. So, so then I, I think that that's why people get so confused by the answer of women when they often will say, no, I'll be a lot prettier in 10 years because they're banking on cosmetic enhancements in order to kind of keep their youthful look. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I, I still think it's... I don't necessarily think that all of the cosmetic enhancements that I have now would look good on me that young, no. Um, so I still think that that could be different. Like. Um, well, which ones? Which ones would have looked worse? Um, <laughs> you're, the, I, I mean, I, you're fundamentally have the same bone structure, same height, same everything, right? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess cosmetic surgery. Like, I don't necessarily think all the work I had done on my body would have been appropriate at 18. I don't think it would have looked better. I think it would have looked ridiculous. But I grew up and then was able to, like, determine what I felt like would be best looks-wise as I got older. Why like, would it have looked worse I don't think, 20? even if I had all the things I had done right now, I, I'm, I'm taking back what I said. I don't think I would have been more attractive at 18 with all of the cosmetic procedures I've had now. I don't. No, so, so let's say it's 20 years old, same exact cosmetic procedures. What about your 20-year-old self would look worse? I guess it's more of an appropriateness to me. Like, I, I... No, 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 not appropriate, not context, none of that. Just two pictures. 20-year-old you, you, yeah, you at the age you are right now, or 34, same cosmetic enhancements. Why does 20-year-old you look worse? I, I, I just don't... I don't know. I can't... I guess it's hard for me to see my 18 year old self how i look now with the cosmetic enhancement so i guess it's just hard like 
um, I don't know how to articulate what I'm trying to explain, but I don't necessarily think if I did all the things I do now that I would look better when I was 18 at all. I did all the things I do now, you know, only in the last few years. So that wasn't until I was in my late 20s um, that I started making a lot of cosmetic changes. But I just, I just, that's me personally. Like, I don't think that me with this size boobs and this size lips and all the things that I do now would have looked good on me at 18. Yeah, but why not though? I just think it would look ridiculous. I think it's also because you grow, like, grow into your adult features. Like, same, like, me at 18, I wouldn't do all of that, but me at 20, 24, I would do those because I look more mature. Because you're trying to capture a youthful appearance, right? Mm. Big boobs don't make you, like, more youthful. Yeah, well, I mean, do you associate saggy breasts with old people or young people? Both. No, you don't associate them with both. You associate absolutely. Perky I've with seen young lots women. of young girls with saggy you, boobs. We associate yeah. perky breasts with younger women. Uh, All, yeah, every, generally, everybody does. Everybody associates that. And here, I can I can demonstrate it for you. Most women, when they go out in public, they wear push-up bras. Why? How come? I guess to appear like they have pushed up boobs. More yeah. Cleavage. And why do they want them to look like that? Why do they want them to look like that? Why do they not want them to want that doesn't, look, they, not look they don't want bigger boobs to make them look more youthful, no, though. They bigger, want bigger boobs bigger. to look the more voluptuous. The bra doesn't necessarily make them appear bigger. It makes them appear perkier, higher, right? And so we associate that with youth. If that's not the case, then why do you wear push-up bras for? I don't no. wear push-up bras. No, I, I know, but women, we... when I'm talking about women, not you, as in you specifically, but just women in general, they wear them nonstop all the time. Why do you think that they use push-up bras? I think uh, because any, of... Especially when they're going to show cleavage. What's what's the purpose? I think we want... Yeah, Cena. Why are you coming at me for? No, I was just like, <laughs> I don't know. I was just asking what you thought because you've been kind of quiet, so... It's to, it's to, like, show that you have bigger breasts, not in general, to show that it's perkier. It's to make them look bigger, that's yeah. what I yeah. think. It's to make, to meet the beauty standards. Mm -hmm. not, it's men. not to make them, it's not to make them look perky, huh? No. Oh, okay. Mm. So, a couple you mentioned diet and eating, and that's going to make, you know, change stuff. And certainly if you're a healthier weight, that can definitely have an impact. Uh, two questions on this. The first way, question. If it was all about making them look just bigger, why wouldn't you yeah. make them look bigger and saggier? What? what? There's padding yeah. in the bra that like pushes it up and also fills There's it There's also in. bras which will push them down. No. Yeah, there are. What? Yeah. There are like, how women, how I don't know what exactly you're referring to <laughs> as far as a bra that pushes them down. Like the only thing I can think of that pushes down is... You wear a strap over to hold them down, or you. There are, yeah, there are like, bras. That's that you're not, to but push, generally to push most. Down. I don't look. I don't know. I'm not a cosmetic expert, okay. <laughs> but my understanding is that these bras do exist, but that does not seem to be what women opt for. They seem to opt for the. They don't. In other words, I don't see cosmetic enhancements on women where they're trying to make their boobs look saggy, ever. Well, you're saying they're pushing that's them really, down. So really then, weird. what are they doing? How come, how come if it's just about size? They don't want them lifted. The bigger your perky. boobs are, like, then you have more cleavage in whatever bra you wear. Like, it, it's to make them seem rounder and bigger. That's why women wear push-up bras. So you don't wear push-up bras, and you just heard from several of us that it is to make them appear bigger and rounder. Yes, perkier in, like, that, that's part of it, but it is to make it look bigger and rounder yeah, what I'm and fuller. Is that the cosmetic, all the cosmetic enhancements seem to be on par with a youthful appearance, not an older appearance. Not designed for a mature look on women, but designed for a youthful look on women. I don't know, is a BBL necessarily youthful? I, I don't, I don't even understand standards. that phenomenon. That's some, that's okay, some but bizarre, that's the phenomenon, it's a beauty standard. That's some weird, bizarre phenomenon that, that, uh, that people <laughs> get into. There's all sorts of fads that happen like this uh, inside of society that I don't actually understand. Uh, BBLs don't look good on anybody. They've never looked good on a single human being who's ever had one and they're never going to. But that aside, 
uh, when I'm when I'm talking about when you're talking about things like boob jobs and this type of thing, it seems like they definitely want them to be perkier, not less perky. It seems like getting the getting the appearance of sagginess out of the picture seems to be priority number one. Okay, my point being is that BBL is to make you rounder and bigger, just like push-up bras are to make you rounder and bigger and more voluptuous and that is a cosmetic procedure that is not to make you look more youthful you could say botox is to make you look more youthful you could say skincare facials are to make you look more youthful but not necessarily boob jobs or bbls or push-up bras they're not to make you yeah, look more youthful they, you could I mean, see a woman are. you could see a woman who's 55 why, years women, old and has number one cleavage. women's number one response for why it is that they get a boob job is because they feel like their breasts are sagging no it's or because small. they want bigger boobs yeah i would agree that <laughs> it's because that, they want them on, bigger on, Ma- women might happens. wait until saw, hang on hang on hang on that also happens i'm giving you the number one answer that i'm looking at here is because they want them lifted or just bigger. I had nothing when I got mine done, and I wanted mm-hmm. something. Yeah, I understand, but you guys are young, right? Mm-hmm. It's true that you, that now younger and younger women are having them done. That didn't used to be the case, especially. And even now, it's still in the age bracket of 30s when they're most commonly done. That's the number one answer given. But isn't that after children when they're just flat? Yeah, and what would we associate if you after children, what happens with the breasts? They get saggy and flat. That's yeah. right. They get it. So <laughs> right, exactly. So you want them to look more youthful. So you do what? Put stuff in it. <laughs> yeah, you you perk them up, right? That's what that's what the goal of that is. Or at least it seems like that that's the case to me. I'm sure that there's women who also have small breasts who want to have larger ones. I'm not disputing that. I'm just saying that, that it seems that the number one reason is for the purpose of youthful appearance. At least if we associate perky breasts and not saggy breasts with youth, which I think most people would. I feel like it just depends on what you're, you know, getting them for. Like, yeah, older people, I agree with Andrew, you know, to make them look less saggy. And then younger people, you know, nowadays, they get it to make them look bigger. So I feel like it goes both ways. Well, women have always gotten them to look bigger, too. I'm just giving you in the course of answers. If we're looking at the respondents and surveys who say, why did you have this done? I'm just telling you about the number one one. I'm not saying that uh, enhancement. And also, by the way, a big one for uh, breast augmentation surgery now is reduction in size. That's a, that's a massive thing that's, uh, that's been happening over the last five, six, seven years. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's that too. I'm just, I'm just pointing out what the answers are when women are surveyed for why they want to do this. Most women don't get a reduction because they don't want to look youthful or it's normally I'm not talking for about a breath I'm not talking about the reasons for breast reduction I'm talking about the reason for breast enhancement yeah but then you bring up breast reduction as if that's a, a relic, no, I'm just, like I'm just trying comparative. to tell you the trend no no I'm just trying to tell you the trend of, of right now there's a trend where younger and younger people are getting breast surgery that's true right but it's good the trend's going both ways for both enhancement and reduction I, but so my, I was just trying to say that reduction is generally because of health issues or pain that you suffer, your neck, your shoulders, your back. I know, just saying. But a lot, and the only women I know that have gotten reductions is because of that reason, is that because they deal with pain from that or issues from it. It's not because they decided they don't like I'm them not, anymore. I'm not just, but I'm not disputing any of that. It's like, it's just, it's just not, I'm just trying to explain the trend. That's all not trying to give you the reasoning for why they have reductions um i i haven't looked up all the answers for why they have reductions i would i would guess also there's a fear of breast cancer and many probably many other reasons that women would cite for this uh but when we're talking about enhancement or why most of them are getting boob jobs it seems that they want to maintain the youthful appearance at least from my perspective and most cosmetic surgery is not designed to make you look older it's designed to make you look younger You could say a BBL perhaps isn't, but a BBL seems like it's a fad cosmetic surgery. Not like, uh, there's some timeless cosmetic surgeries like a nose job, boob job. I mean, I could, I could again say, I don't think that, um, oh, I lost my train of thought listening to you. Sorry, go ahead. No, 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 it was your turn. I'm sorry, I was done talking. I, I, it just down the river of thoughts, so. Okay. (laughs) No worries. I, uh, Andrew, what do you think would be the kind of, if there, if there was, and I don't think it, even if there is, well, there maybe is, but it's certainly not as prominent or as frequent, what would be the equivalent male cope? Like balding? Like 
if guys started coping oh yeah women um no, no, no. I, I wear a toupee for my friends. I was going to say a hairline. <laughs> yeah, women. <laughs> I wear a toupee for my friends. <laughs> the less hair the less hair I have, the more attractive women. Like, is yeah. that the cope? Would that the, be the cope? No, but, it's like the bigger my beer belly, the more attractive women find me. I don't, even, I don't know if that matches on as close. It could be penis size. Like, oh, yeah, women love my three-incher. <laughs> I mean, height. I think I mean. height would be it, right? So, men get if if a man were to say that they were getting uh, surgery to increase their height, and there are men who do that, it's super dangerous, but they do it. Yeah. Um, and they were to say, "I'm just doing that for my pals," uh, I, th I think we would say that that's uh, that's cope. We would be like, "Bro, you're not getting your height increased because you're buddies. You're getting your height increased because you want to be more attractive to the opposite sex." No, I'm not I, saying. I think that, I'm not saying that the comparative cope for the whole like I wear makeup for myself, I do X Y Z for the for the women. I'm saying yeah. the cope about I'm going to be better looking when I'm older. I think the comparative like what is the comparative cope there in so far as women's unwillingness to acknowledge that typically speaking they're going to be the most attractive and most desirable by men in their early 20s. That's actually a really good question. I'm sitting here racking my brain. Like I but can't think as of as many men as I've as I've talked to in various panels about these these topics, they're ju they just kind of cop to it immediately. They're like, uh, yeah, of course, I was a stud when I was 21, and now I'm you know 45, and I got a beer gut and blah blah blah. Right? So they they seem to be they seem to just kind of be honest about it. I don't know. They I, I haven't yeah. really heard much in the way of a, maybe some of them cope, but I haven't heard much of it. Oh, so I guess men, when it comes to like them aging, I don't know if it's like totally similar though, because I think there is differences between. Oh, like, I'll have. I guess I'll have more money. That could be the big one. Right? I was about to say, I'm sorry. Like for, I'll be like, able to meddling. offset it with money. I'll be able to for offset what? my bad looks. Was, with money. I'm sorry for like interjecting like that, but I was gonna say I think that's the only option, unfortunately, that's left for men. I, ha yeah. I literally had a conversation the other day with one of. Um, I was in an Uber and. Um, this dude who had a whole company had everything and stuff was going down and he was very openly and honestly admitting to like yeah and i know i'm like gonna end up with like nobody by the time i'm like getting older so i'm just building a foundation for myself and become super rich and i'm gonna get myself a young girl give her but everything you know what? so actually, she doesn't leave me after after having heard you say that i can't actually say that that's cope because it seems like it's the opposite of cope. So he's going, okay, long term, right? I definitely know I'm not going to be more attractive. I definitely know that. So I'm going to have to hedge my bets properly with one thing that I can give to the opposite sex that they'll really like. That sounds like the opposite of delusion to me. But then the girls take advantage of that. That's the problem. And then we end up with girls that feel the <laughs> entitlement of like, this is why we have so many women that are like, well, yeah, of course I'm supposed to be treated like this and given all of this. Yeah, and I think that, I don't I think that need some men can be return. taken advantage of, right? But if the entire dating strategy that you have is, I'm really ugly, but if I'm rich, I got a shot at good-looking women, then th basically the goal is to make yourself a gold mine for a gold digger, right? I mean, yeah, because like, that, that, that's that basically all the, what you're doing? Yeah, that, and that's straight up what I told him. I'm like, so you're basically going to look for a gold digger? And he was like, and, and they're very, like some dudes I've noticed, I'm like, it's kind of shocking, I guess. Well, to me at least, I'm like, they're like, well, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine Scott with it as Stillman. long as... Yeah, I don't even know how that's taking advantage, though, if he's expecting it. If he's like... Yeah, I guess yeah, in my that's mind, you know, what my it's options like... Are, you know? taking it I, I guess for somebody who views it conservatively and actually views it as like damn bro like you really gonna just let somebody like a girl really just take advantage of you that way even though he's willingly like you said he's letting it like so is it really taking advantage at that point but i mean i mean i think that there's probably a lot of men who have a long-term straight a dating strategy based around the fact that they think that when they're older and have m many, many more resources that they can be much more appealing to the types of women that they want. And I don't even think that they're wrong. So that seems like it's proactive and the opposite of delusion, but rather being proactive so that um, they can basically stay in the dating market at an older age. I do think that it's a bit delusional, though, 
to hear 20, 21 year olds uh, say that they think they'll be just as attractive when they're 45 or more attractive. I think that that's wildly, I mean, I think that that's crazy. I mean, there, granted, there could be some who are, I'm not going to dispute that, but I mean, the overwhelming vast majority of women are not going to be more attractive when they're 40 versus 20. That's, that's just, that's just insane. I don't like, think I don't it know, matters. I don't know why anybody would ever believe that. Like, I, even women don't believe it. Go ahead. What and were you going to say? I don't think it matters how healthy you try to stay, too. Because, like, um, you know, like my looking at my mom and grandma, bless our genetics, you know, we all look really young for our ages. You know, my mom looks super good for her yeah, age. Yeah, you do. My you look super, super young. I, when you said your age, I was <laughs> like, no way. Really? Yeah. I, um, yeah, I just that's the genetics that I have but even though uh, you know if I am healthy I you know 10 years from now that doesn't mean I'm gonna look better you know compared to myself now you know even though I could I be think healthy that what happens is I think you have a good point here I think what happens is a lot of women hear this you're not going to be attractive at 45 yeah versus you're not going to be as attractive at 45 as mm -hmm. when you were 25 but I think they just hear you're not going to be attractive at 45. And it's like, that's not what anybody's saying. Exactly. I, there's tons and tons of 40, 45, 50 year old women who are highly attractive. It's just the comparison in age of, to their 25 year old self, generally they're less attractive than that. Mm -hmm. Which makes sense, it's youth, right? Mm -hmm. It's what every cosmetic industry promises you. They promise you a youthful look. I've never seen the, this will age you quicker skin cream. <laughs> I have never never seen that marketing yet. 